<laughs> What's up, refugee? Let me make sure everyone can hear you now. Uh, Jeff, appreciate that. Podcasts? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, podcasts. Oh, look at that. The chat can't be seen. Let's move that up so people can see the chat. Matter of fact, we just put the... We put this down. Oh, that's cool. Now I like the little see the chat. pop-up thing. Yeah, Caitlin. Caitlin always doing that stuff. Oh, uh, sweet. All right, here we go. In three oh, I'm already hitting record. Never mind. What's up, fellow heroes? Welcome to the Digital Roundtable, where me and my co-host, Jeff, speak about whatever it is we're feeling like speaking about. Mostly movies, video games, nerdy things, geek culture. Every once in a while, we'll get Louie here. But you can catch us live at twitch.tv slash digitalhero101, 8.30 p.m. Stop in. Chat with us. We love to have you here. Yeah. We love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> Louis Louis sees the Louis sees the chat. Louis's like, hey, hey, <laughs> they're giving me treats. Hey, hey. They did the me, thing, so now give me the thing. They're doing the thing. Now give me the thing. And then uh I'll do one better. I'm gonna actually gonna go feed Louis. I probably should have fed him before the stream started, but yeah, I'm gonna go feed Louis. Uh, that's what he's bugging me about. And then uh, I need to hydrate because Ezio's here. <laughs> Ezio got back from, uh, yeah, I need to get some water while I'm at it. So, all right, Jeff, keep him occupied. I probably started recording at the absolute worst time, but uh, <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. Hey, guys. So today, as you can see from the title, we're going to talk about Loki which is a, a Marvel property produced by Disney. So, you know, instead of talking about the dumb stuff that Disney has done with Marvel this week, I don't know if y'all read, but Disney kind of messed up with something this week. But instead of talking about that, we're going to talk about Loki, which is a good thing that Disney produced a couple weeks ago. And, uh... Yeah, if you haven't seen Loki, the way, <laughs> and you do care about spoilers, vacate now. If you haven't seen Loki and you don't care about spoilers, welcome, welcome. And if you have seen Loki, then you don't have anything to worry about. That's easy math. I'm so glad you brought that up. It's so funny the way you're saying it, though. Uh, here, I'm gonna hydrate for you guys. I grabbed, I grabbed a can of. Uh, of, of sparkling water because it was faster than getting water. <laughs> yeah, that was go. my subtle way of like, I want to talk about it a little bit because I want to get your opinion, <laughs> but we don't have to do an entire episode about corporations screwing over people because that never know, happens. That's such a unique thing, though, Jeff. We do a fun one this week. <laughs> that never, that corporate, we like, that's such a unique topic, though, like corporations screwing over the little guy. It never happens. It never happens. Like I don't know They're, why you don't want to talk. It's so it's not like it's beating a dead horse or anything. Like why? What's up with that, man? Yeah, uh, it literally <laughs> only happened this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. No. Uh, I, I I did recently hear about that, and it's crazy how often and how quickly we switch uh can we'll switch the topic on a dime and i love that about us but yeah no uh the the best thing about this what's happening is i'm glad that these actors or actresses i should say are standing mm -hmm. up and sticking it to the to the big guy it is a crappy situation altogether though so for those of you unaware uh scarlett johansson is suing disney for um releasing black widow on the streaming service now why why would she be upset about that i know disney's been showing off they've been flexing their big numbers recently it's mainly because she she wasn't part of that contract like they did a contract with her saying hey okay you guys are going to get paid for uh the theatrical releases and we're going to release it in theaters and then they go and they're they say you know what you know what all our disney releases 
they've been kind of doing it's been kind of getting spicy it's been kind of getting spicy and you know everyone wants to see this marvel movie it's been almost a whole year without marvel let's uh let's uh let's double dip a little bit and so that's, that's what they did they uh released it on the streaming services however that's just 100 profit for disney right there because no one was in part of that uh the reason i'm glad that they're stepping up and in, in, in like taking action for this is because a similar situation happened when hbo when warner brothers essentially did the same thing uh when they started releasing all these movies on hbo max and all the directors and producers were upset because that wasn't part of like the contract like they weren't they weren't getting a cut in so essentially these people are doing the work and uh it's like playing a game of DD. you know the dm comes in and, and does all the work but you, uh, uh the characters like scanlan gets all the credit because he's funny no, no. <laughs> it's yeah they're, they're doing all the work and disney's providing a service or the warner or hbo and disney are providing a service to put it out and but they're taking like a big a bigger cut when it, you know they, they could have if they knew they were going to do this in the first place why would they cut them out and it's it's kind of scummy i don't know I'm, I'm starting to talk in circles jeff no you're fine uh, uh no i mean there's there's a lot to consider here um i i think the the first thing we have to look at is, is yeah, there's a lot to look at. First thing we have to look at is what actually happened. And I honestly True. don't know what's worse between option A and option B because option A is Disney was malicious and they were just like, you know what? We're going to do this. We're going to release it on Disney Plus and we're not going to even bother looking at renegotiating contracts. Fuck it. Let's just move forward. Yeah. And option B is it didn't occur to them that they would need to renegotiate contracts by doing this. Right. So why they are assholes or they're dimwitted and that's terrible for Disney. Here's <laughs> the thing. It's a big corporation. Yeah, it's a, it's a big corporation. It, both, both options are pretty bad. First things first, I want to say, uh, welcome back refugee. Uh, missed you. Hope you had a good time and same with Ezio. Ezio was gone for the weekend, but, uh, refugee was gone for the week. Uh, we had a, we had a big weekend this past weekend and I'm glad to have you guys back. It's good. It's good to see yeah. you guys. Uh, and firstly, I think it's option number one. I think Disney somewhat knew what they were doing. Right? Yeah. Because if it was option number two. Okay, let's say it is option number two. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt for a second. Because if it's option number two, Disney didn't realize that they were going to release it on the streaming service. And um, and it happens. And then Scarlett Johansson's like immediately goes to sue them. I doubt mm -hmm. that's what happened. I feel like it was option number one. They kind of had an idea of this was what's going on. They put the you know they put the contract down saying hey you know hey you want to you want to you want to get a cut of the theatrical release yeah you want that all right that's cool that's all you want like just you know plausible deniability kind of that thing of well we never said you know you never even mentioned about the streaming service you didn't say we couldn't do it kind of one of those things right. and then the streaming service happens because if it was option number two and it was by like mistake i feel like when scarlett johansson comes knocking at their door they would be like, you know what? This is a big misunderstanding. Are you okay if we just take those theatrical release agreements and apply them to the streaming service agreements as well? Or maybe they said, oh, sorry. Like, we didn't realize that was happening. Look, our streaming service, it's a bit different than movie theaters because it's coming straight to us. How about instead of taking the percentage you were taking for the movie theaters, you take a different percentage and Scarlett Johansson's like, oh, no, screw that. So, like... Yeah, it, 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 there's so many variables of what it could be, but I truly and honestly feel like it was more of like Disney saying, hey, well, Warner Brothers got away with it. I think we can do the same well, thing. Yeah, and, and, and Warner Brothers, it, I, I don't know how they worked it out with everybody, but uh, the way that they worked it out with Gal Gadot and Patty Jenkins, star and director of Wonder Woman 1984, respectively, is basically because everybody like all the filmmakers with warner brothers were like pissed they're like what the fuck because uh, it's the same thing they just didn't tell anybody and suddenly there are all of these promos all over the place of like day and date it, it, you can watch it on tv at the same time it releases in theaters 
But the way that they worked it out with Gal Gadot and uh, Patty Jenkins was they were like, look, this is unprecedented. Uh, we're, we're trying to figure it out. The check for 10 million bucks. And so like they, they were, they negotiated and they settled and they were like, hey, like there's no way to project how much money the movie is going to make the box office because we're dealing with this unprecedented pandemic. There's no way to calculate numbers that this is unheard of. So can we just give you money? And they were like, sure, like give me 10 million bucks and we'll call it a day. And I think kind of one ball in Disney's court, which is like, like like the one thing that ScarJo's team has done wrong, in my opinion, is um, like in the lawsuit, it states something to the effect of Disney did this with the specific intent of screwing over our client. Yeah, that's a good point. Which is like, that's fucking blatant. That's blatantly untrue. They did yeah. this because there's a pandemic going on and nobody knows how the box office of a theatrical exhibition works anymore. The science and the algorithm is completely changed right now. Yeah. Now the fact that they didn't bother renegotiating. Yeah, that's fucked, but they didn't do this to be like, ah, fuck you black widow. We don't give a shit. Ha 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 ha. <laughs> Twirling mustache, you know, like, right. and that's how I feel like that's what a lot of people are thinking. Now, yeah. granted, I do think that that plays into it a little bit because the more this story develops, like with her filing a lawsuit, with Disney clapping back, and then ScarJo's team clapping back at them, yeah, it does feel like it. Like it, the the more I think about it, it just makes me hate the movie so much more. Like I know that we already talked about it, and I was already like down on it and and considerably lower on it than you were. But the more this happens, the more I hate the movie because I'm just like, yes, like it literally feels like Disney thought of this character as an afterthought. Like we don't give a shit about this character. Cool. We'll do the solo movie, whatever. But it's just like, yeah, like they they literally just didn't care about her. And it's it's fucked. Like it, it's it's weird. I was talking to to TJ at the store earlier today. And I was just like, it's it's kind of difficult for me to feel bad for Scarlett jo for for a celebrity who's in a place of privilege and is probably good on money, and she's an international celebrity, of course. But it's fucked, especially when you know. And, and this is something that we were kind of talking about last week with the whole Blizzard thing. That I I think you can't really ignore the gender factor here, which is like yeah. Downey. Evans and Hemsworth, they made their nuts on these past movies. This is time for ScarJo to finally make her nut, and she wants her fucking nut, dude. <laughs> you know, I don't blame her. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's. I love that analogy, by the way. <laughs> but it's so, it's so messed up, and I think about that too. Because I, I, there's some things about the movie that I really think about, and I, and as Black Widow evolves throughout the MCU, it's very subtle, and it's very, it's it's very much in the background because she's a sporting character. Like the Falcon didn't get to shine until they got his own show. I didn't really, honestly, I didn't really care about the Falcon. I didn't really care. I don't, to be fair, I didn't care about any of the sporting cast of mm -hmm. uh, the Avengers. Like I want to. And I and but I feel like they do their jobs as supporting characters to help the main characters be that you know Thor, Captain America, and Iron Man. And so I was excited for the Black Widow movie, but it still was set up in a way by Disney or by whatever executive made these decisions. It was still set up in a way to pr promote and move along the agenda. It was not set up for Scarlett Johansson, just like you're saying. And that's right. and in this fiasco that's going on is even more evidence of the situation of how much they just did not they don't care about the character. They care about okay, mm -hmm. what can the character do for me? What can the because honestly they would do this to to any character, right? But I feel like they probably get a sense that it can be done easier 
to this character or to Scarlett Johansson to a female, you know, whatever it may be, they 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 felt more of agenda needed to be placed um, here because there's a call for her to have her own movie. And so they're like, all right, give the people what they want. But at the same time, make sure we're still making money. So it's it's messed up. It, it's a, it's a situation. I'm glad she's fighting back, and not she's not the only one fighting back. Was it Emily Blunt? No, uh, Emma Stone uh, is. Con- uh, the the headlines are she is quote considering her options uh, after Cruella. After Cruella, because they did okay. And who's the one that's in um, that movie with Dwayne the Rock? Uh, Emily Blunt uh, for Jungle Emily Cruise. Blunt. Okay, Jungle also. Cruise. Yeah, she's also there's things During floating that. around about her as well, but I'm not entirely sure on the facts for that. Hmm. Yeah, so it's like the three of them are coming yeah. at, are, are coming at it at Disney. Um, it could just be fans wanting um, Emily Blunt to go. Who is she? Isn't she just something? Oh, okay, that's right. Sorry, sorry. I had a moment with myself. I mm-hmm. don't. I it's bad. I <laughs> I was like I was like for some reason I thought she was married to the guy who plays Deadpool. Oh, Ryan Reynolds. But she's not. She's married to the guy from The Office. John Krasinski. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan but, Reynolds yeah. is married to Blake Lively. Blake Lively. But, yeah. I, I can understand your confusion. Both gorgeous men, both gorgeous women. I mean, oh, come on. How could you? How could you not? Because I, I thought I because w- I was thinking about that. I was like, I'm curious as to what the reason I was thinking about Ryan Reynolds was because he's a super. He plays as like he's in the superhero world, and now he's may might be, you know, with Disney with his property and character with Deadpool. So I was wondering, like, I wonder mm-hmm. if. You know what what he would say because I know um, Dave Batista came out and said something, but it was like a tweet. Um, he also owes yeah, a lot said, to the character of Drax, so there's that too. Yeah, he's he's he basically said he is done with Drax after Guardians Three oh, because wow. like I I believe I love the character and I believe wholly in the vision of James Gunn. Because uh, I, I think it, it was basically, it, it's ultimately like his love for James Gunn as a creative person. Because he's like, James is going to be done after Guardians 3, and I'm not interested in playing Drax if James isn't there. Interesting, yeah. Which is like, that's fucking cool, dude. Because yeah. like, you know, it, it, like if Disney wanted to, like they could continue making movies in the future, but he's like, I, I, I want to do it if it's up to my standards. And right. if not, then I'm going to go pursue other shit. Yeah. And I like it when actors do that. It is sad and disheartening whenever an actor is like, I'm done with this character. Cause me, I'm, I'm like, Hey, give me more, give me more, please. Give me. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I guess I can understand the, uh, the withdrawal, but he did, he did, send something like oh i wanted to make a drax movie but they said no uh in response to how scarlett johansson uh was suing them and things like that and uh but well yeah that's that whole situation keep you up to date on that (laughs) if i if i hear any more news i'll definitely um say more on the discord so yeah if you want to if you're with us here live uh here's a here's a link to the discord uh join the community uh, we love talking about nerdy things all the time, anytime. <laughs> but and speaking of characters, we were we thought we were done with, but are now getting to explore more. Is that a segue? I'm smelling. <laughs> Is that a segue, darling. <laughs> oh, yeah, Loki. On to on to the. That was the appetizer. Here's the main that course. Was pre-show. That was a pre-show. <laughs> main course. What the title's about. Loki. Uh, Loki. We, we, so we, 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 as tradition, we're going to go ahead and tell you what we think. Our first our first thoughts. Uh, and then me and Jeff are going to speak to one another. Bring up some viewpoints. Maybe enlighten the other person. And then we'll tell you what we think after our conversation with what with. Uh, one another so that's uh usually how our reviews slash discussions slash um off topic trailing caboose goes 
my initial thoughts of Loki is I I liked it. I liked it. I would recommend it. Um, I did have a problem with some of the continuity. Not what you would think. For very specific moments that I, I felt was like, okay, what's happening? And other than that, the show works. The show works for me. It, it, it excited me. For Marvel, I'm not one of those people that have been burnt out from Marvel just yet. I don't know. Maybe if, when I like, ooh, I just take that desk as I kick it. Uh, maybe I'm just one of those people when I like something, I just know I like it. And so it, it, it takes a little bit for me to be deterred away from it. Um, I haven't been burnt out of Marvel. Like I, I'm probably, I might eat my words here, but I'll probably be watching Marvel until I'm 50 if they're still going on. So it, it, and not complain about it yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either way, this um, excited me for the next phase in the, the Marvel uh, universe, the uh, MCU universe, I should say. Uh, the it was it was really cool, and it connected things in ways that I wasn't expecting. But at the same time, it did what Star Wars failed to do, and what Game of Thrones failed to do. And it, it took uh, something that fans were expecting and had theorized and put it in there, put it in the show, and it worked. And it didn't <laughs> hurt. It, that It came true. It didn't feel like they were pandering to me or anything like that. So, happy about that. Uh, I would give the show... The show's so good. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'd have to give the show like a 9. I haven't seen any reviews nor read any reviews. I'm getting in the habit of just keeping my mind as unbiased as possible until we talk about it, Jeff. And then I'll go and I'll compare what I said to other people. So I sometimes, though, I do like to... I'm stalling because I don't know what number to give it. Uh, sometimes, though, I do like to go and listen to reviews and get like a different viewpoint and stuff like that after I've read it. I don't let my things get clouded by other people's uh, statements, but I'm also not stubborn enough to not change my mind. So with that being said, as of right now, my my score for Loki is probably a nine out of ten. I just I really liked it. I thought it did a really good job with the character. Uh, however, continuity wise, specifically with Loki's powers, I was like, uh, Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's what? Like wait, what? What did you do? <laughs> like wait. I mean, in the Battle of New York, you were able to take an explosion to the face, no problem. You and you were able to get Hulk slammed left and right like a cartoon. But now you can't do, and then you can do this in this show, and now you can't do this in this show. I was like, okay, it just felt like a budget TV show, and that took me out of the immersion. Uh, that that's what bothered me about the the Loki TV show. I mean, it is a budget TV show, so what do you expect? Uh, <laughs> and still a shit ton of money though it's still a lot of money a lot of money but th yeah that's what that's what takes it away from me was the continuity and then secondly was it's weird because the events of loki kind of happened in the span of a couple days technically speaking yeah um so it's kind of hard they're they do a really good job for you to sympathize with him. They do such a good job. They trick you into like they 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 pull at your heartstrings, but at the same time you have to remember that because of the way the time works in this show, um it's not much of spoilers. It it it's it's right after the Battle of New York. So if you remember Avengers at all, this is right after this guy just gouged someone's eye out and was smiling. <laughs> it was casually, you know, murdering people on the streets and laughing about it, and wanting to be their new king and ruler. So it's all it's kind of awkward whenever right after that, you know, he they try to pull at your heartstrings and be like, look, he's about to cry. Do you feel for him? And you're like, boo hoo. <laughs> so there's. Uh, yeah, but uh, nine out of ten with those slight things. The reason I don't dock it for for what I just talked about pulling at the heart strings is because they do a fantastic job at getting you to feel for the guy. They do a fantastic job. So even if you are that person, that's like, well, he's done all these horrible things. I don't want to like him. Well, the way the, the writing and the, the plot design, fantastic. 
So that's that's my thing. Jeff, what's yours? Uh, Initial thoughts. It's, it's really good. And then it's kind of boring and meandering. Yeah. And then it's pretty fucking great. <laughs> the end. The end. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Okay. So no, that was... Uh, I- <laughs> no, uh, kind of going through in general, I thought the the, the first two episodes, because going into it, I knew that there were six episodes, so I was kind of looking at it as your basic three-act structure, where like one and two, that's act one, which works perfectly because the end of episode two perfectly sets up, okay, we've met all the important characters, this is the plot. The, the the plot is now in motion. Here we go. And then three and four, I, I found a little tedious and slow until the end of episode four, which when we get to spoilers, I'll, I'll kind of go into more detail of why, that there's some interesting stuff going on. And then five and six... This is kind of our 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 denouement. The the Deus Ex Machina, everything comes to fruition, and then we kind of set up where the MCU is going to go in the future. And I thought it was fucking fantastic. Um, the the my biggest gripe with it, I think, is that the version of Loki that he ultimately becomes because of like like as a result of the events in the show i i think it happens way too fast initially um you, you kind of touched on it with like oh he watches this footage and now he's crying and it's like oh so all of the character development that he did in the alternate timeline of thor ragnarok and infinity war that just happened in the span of like 30 seconds. That was a little too fast for me. Um, but yeah, it's a it's an interesting show. It's a it's a show that I, I found very interesting. There was there are a couple of things I've, I I found kind of tax like the the main thing that sticks out to me as something I didn't like is. In episode three, there's this action sequence, which is this long, I mean, it's clearly not a true one where where it's like this long one take kind of thing when they're running around Lamentis. It, it just felt very clunky and overstaged to me. Like, like the camera work was very apparent and the way that the actors were moving was very like, it, it felt like it, it felt like I was watching them do a dance, if that makes sense, where they're like, and now we run, two, three, four, stop! Oh, here's the thing, and now we turn the other way. Five, six, seven, eight, explosion! And it was just, it didn't feel natural, and it was like, I would much rather have seen this action sequence cut up, as opposed to, let's do it as this long, beautiful one take that it just feels very staged. But that's that's just me nitpicking. Um, but ultimately, um, again, like the, the, the most important thing that a movie can do or, or a show can do that a thing can do is you got to stick the landing and we'll get to the specific specifics of this in the spoilers, but Holy fuck. I love the ending. Cause it's my favorite type of ending. Again, uh, uh, um, you know, you look at a lot of superhero movies, especially in the MCU where it's like the climax is there's a giant light beam, usually blue colored shooting up in the sky and the world's about to end and we're all flying around and shooting, shooting and zap, zap and punchy, punchy. We're flying and it's like a big fight. Yep. yep. The last fucking 45 minutes of the Loki season is a dude talking. Mm-hmm. Then it's a little bit of three people talking, but for the most part, it's a dude talking and it's all exposition. Holy shit, does this character dump so much backstory and so much exposition. I'm getting very loud and impassioned, I I, I know, but holy fuck, is it riveting, it's compelling, it's funny in kind of a gallows humor sort of way where it's like these are some serious circumstances these are dire circumstances that we're dealing with but this is hilarious 
it kind of reminded me of Nicolas Cage, but if Nicolas Cage wasn't doing his Nicolas Cage thing, if he was, if, if he was like actually acting, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, it, they do something which again, it, it, we kind of all knew was coming because Comic-Con happened two years ago and the Doctor Strange sequel title was revealed. So we kind of knew this was coming. Um, but that being said, like, I knew it was coming, but I'm still excited about it. And yeah. uh, everything else that I have to say it kind of gets into potential spoiler territory. So I'll save that for when you, the host, give permission to talk about spoilers. Uh, okay. I'm going to go 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10? Okay, that's fair. I was uh, I was debating between the two, really. Uh, it's I think the meandering... I, I, can, I can see that. I can see that. It's not something I thought of, but I, I, I think that has to do with the week to week, right? Watching it week to week. Because if it came out on Netflix and we got to binge it, I wonder if that would have changed the experience of watching it. Maybe I should just go binge it real quick after this and then see how I feel. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, those are our thoughts. Uh, we love to hear what you have to say in chat, but we're definitely going to hop right back in, right into the spoilers of this show. So if you haven't seen this show, I mean... My recommendation, yes, go see it. Jeff, do you recommend to go see it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Watch it. Get, get that Disney Plus and watch it. Remember, our numbers are just arbitrary. If we recommend it to you, definitely. <laughs> definitely go see it. So, uh, yeah. Jump me into the spoilers. Man, did I like... Okay, can I complain about something real quick? No. 100% off topic, by the way. Like, I just, <laughs> I need to get this off my chest to you, Jeff. Okay. Uh, I went to go see The Green Knight today. Oh, how was it? I don't know. Okay. Literally, right when the movie started, sirens started going off in my movie theater. Oh, no. And telling us to vacate the premise because a storm was rolling in. Oh, shit. And so we were sitting out in the lobby and they were like, all right, you can go back to your, and I mean, right when the movie started, like the first couple scenes, it was so, it, it was, it was so unprecedented that like when the sirens are going off, everyone in the theater was kind of like, that's an interesting choice. Oh, did this movie take place during modern day? Like, Oh, and then I look, you know, me and Kate look over to the guy sitting next to us and we're like, we think that's for us. Like, I don't think this is part of the movie. <laughs> so, <laughs> We're sitting in the lobby, and then they tell us, "Okay, go back to your, go back to your auditoriums." And then they're saying, "But don't if you have a theater upstairs, don't go upstairs." And they're saying, "Stay in the hallway where it's safe." And you know, uh, and yeah, and so we go back in there. We've already missed maybe the first fifteen to twenty minutes of the film. Oh, so they didn't restart it when you went back. No, they just kept on rolling, and the alarm's still going off the entire time. So I was just like. Let's, let's just go home. Let's just go. Yeah, I, I didn't even bother to ask for a refund. I just said, let's just go home. Well, the thing was, because we have Cinemark. Oh, okay. So we got, we used our two free tickets. And then we essentially bought the popcorn and stuff. And I was like, whatever, I'm just going to. I, I I basically came to the movie theater to pick up popcorn. And I'm not upset about that. So then I came <laughs> home. And see, I was going to watch Green Knight this weekend and then watch the suicide squad next weekend mm -hmm. but i don't know somehow i'm honestly i'm probably going to choose the green knight over suicide squad <laughs> like next okay. week so uh i was so hyped to see that movie though but it was lame so i came home and i watched uh, black swan for the first time <laughs> oh nice <laughs> yeah so, that was that was a trip i knew nothing about that film going into it so that was a trip okay the timing was great. What I'm hearing, yeah, the timing was perfect for that film. Literally, I was like, the guy next to me said, man, that was, this is an artistic take on this film. Okay. Because for those of you that don't know, Green Knight is a, is an epic poem, essentially like the Odyssey, like Homer, the Odyssey, the Iliad, yeah. but instead taking place over medieval, during a medieval yeah. period. So I think that I, I've never read it. I had to read the Iliad for high school, but. I was so stoked. And I've heard so many good things about the Green Knight. So, what a way. <laughs> Directed by a local boy. We got really? DFW represent. David Lowry is from the Metroplex. Hype. No shit. 
And oh, uh, and he's uh, actually keep keeping it with Disney. Uh, so he's done a lot of stuff. You can look him up on IMDb. But he is currently doing the new Peter Pan for Disney because they're making live action everything. But hey, it's David Lowry and he's great. So well, is this he- like the fourth? third peter pan live action there was a uh, peter pan there was pan and then there was oh, true. Why, there i don't was know why it not occurred to me until now be robert williams peter pan it's like yeah like <laughs> it's making live action versions of all of their animated stuff but peter pan has been done with re- that's funny <laughs> that should have occurred to me before right now <laughs> And now I wish I hadn't dropped that fun fact because now I feel dumb. (laughs) Yeah, good, man. (laughs) Okay. Um, Do you want to take this off topic further or should we get back to it? (laughs) No, let's let's get back to how amazing Jonathan Majors is. Loki, (laughs) so good. So good. So good. I first thing, the set design. I, I have a soft spot. For like analog things or for yes. the 20s or 30s. Oh my gosh, the set design in Loki was so good. I <laughs> they really captured the feeling of a bureaucracy with <laughs> the way that they set it up. And I know it's influence from the comics and things like that, but apparently yeah. I was speaking to one of them. So whenever he goes to talk to the receptionist for the first time. And he like he you know he dings the bell and he says I would like all the information on the team timekeepers and she's like no and he's like well I would like the end of time the beginning of time she's like no no <laughs> and well, what uh, kind that of- that right <laughs> it's just like here's the file you're supposed to read that keyboard she's typing on is apparently from what I heard from a, a buddy of mine is like a really rare and hard to get keyboard. Like, it's just like, if you're an analog enthusiast, that that's just one of the things that is just impossible to, or just really like a cool find, I should say. So, like so they did their homework. Keyboard that looks like a typewriter, right? Right, right. Basically. Yeah. And they did their homework and I thought that was really cool um, that they just put stuff in there for everyone, you know? Uh, there's Easter eggs for Marvel fans, there's Easter eggs for collectors, there's... Uh, so set design, I am a huge fan of set design. I'm a huge, I love it when directors, I guess, hide things or when uh, set designers hide things and put things in there for mm-hmm. the audience to like uh, poke at or notice. And um, mm-hmm. I think I think Tom Hiddleston, let me pull up IMDb real quick. So I think Tom Hiddleston did great. And then we had a, I did not know because I didn't look at the casting uh, beforehand. I didn't know, what's his name? You know I, who I, I'm thinking I, I, about. I'm going to ask Owen Wilson? Owen Wilson, yes. I didn't know Owen Wilson was going to be in the show. I didn't know he was in the show. It was such a nice surprise because I haven't awesome. seen him in such a minute. That's so cool for you. Yeah, it was great. I was like, Owen Wilson! <laughs> and he's so, just different enough because he's got the facial hair and he's got the like kind of short hair. It's not like the long, shaggy dirty blonde that we're used to seeing right right he was great he was fantastic owen wilson was god he fit in that role so great uh i think all the actors actresses were well casted i never felt like something was out of place i guess the only but this was this is more of a nitpick for me the only time um things got weird was that kid loki i don't know i just could never i didn't care (laughs) for that kid loki at all but yeah he i just uh, it just felt weird uh set was cool i don't know what they i don't know what they filmed on did they film on the same set where they filmed the mandalorian because if they did that would be really I, cool i want to believe that they did um b- because again it's we're used to the technology actors you're you're cutting out a lot, my dude. I don't know what's happening. Uh, let me try it real quick. All right, more consistent. <laughs> no, you're you're robotic. I don't know what happened. I don't know if you're like lagging or something.
Oh no. So we're having uh, digital difficulties. We'll uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start rambling on while uh, Jeff is figuring out his stuff. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens. So the plot of Loki, you know, we kinda you kinda got a taste of it whenever we were in the talking about pre-spoilers. It is you know, Loki's a variant. He's a, is this is not, it's the same Loki that we saw in the journey all the way up until Thor Ragnarok or all the way up until Infinity War, if you want to go that far. But he <clears throat> is now taken out. So, right after the Avengers Battle of New York, he escapes. That we see this in Endgame. He picks up the Tesseract and Vamoose is out of there. Right after that scene, he gets captured. And we get introduced to um i forgot what they're called the agency uh basically time cops that go in and and make sure that there is only a certain timeline that happens in the universe and that he is going to disrupt this timeline and so this whole thing is you know loki talking about free will and i've seen so many i you know i love i love looking at video analysis or video um essays over over tv shows and over movies let's see that's probably jeff he said discord crept out relogging in now all right hopefully that that works out for him and a lot of the things that i saw is <clears throat> so loki you know they, they talk about this again we're in spoilers now so owen wilson they talk about loki's character and how he is supposed to essentially he's the villain of the story he's supposed to be there to bring the heroes together or he's supposed to be there he's live die repeat uh as a cycle uh, very similar to the norse mythology of loki that was what he does he is stuck in a time loop in norse mythology and he goes over and over again uh, uh to essentially uh following the same path and this Loki is trying to break that loop. He's trying to break and he's trying to grow as a character. And I love how <clears throat> Owen Wilson's character is essentially the definition of what a supporting cast character is. So anytime you guys hear me talk about supporting characters and they did their job as a supporting character, that's essentially what Mobius does for Loki in this show. Mobius is there to essentially just say hey dude fix yourself fix yourself because we need you to be the hero of this story and this is sort of goes along the lines of the hero's journey so if you've ever watched star wars uh george lucas loves to go off of the hero's journey and he loves to make uh it's this plot point it's a circle you can google it but essentially there's these certain arcs that a hero must go through almost like mythology and this fits perfectly for loki because why he's a mythos character so it's it, it, these characters which is funny i was talking about the green knight but they're they're built in a way so you can learn lessons from them that's what mythos are built for so you learn lessons from them so you don't make the same mistakes and loki is trying to give himself free will and that's what this story is about and i think it's a wonderful story and i think they put it together great and the plot works well all the while him trying to regain free will he learns about you know fate and he learns whether fate can it's 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 all this not i don't want to say psychological it's all this um philosophical it's all this philosophical way of thinking and how to go about things and they really, they make the character think, and Mobius has his way of thinking of saying, hey, this is just how things are supposed to be. I have a purpose in life, and I like my purpose in life. But Loki, he doesn't really like his purpose in life. He wants his own purpose in life. But Mobius is telling him, well, you have already set your your ways. You know, you're already doing the thing that you do. You do awful things. And, I, and so the plot works. I think the plot works with the character fantastically. And the, it, get, it works so well, it makes you want to watch the next episode. And it makes you want to see Loki grow. Uh, and the plot seems... It's not too convoluted either. It's funny because time travel and whenever you get into time and whenever you get into all these other things, uh, the plot can 
get very convoluted very quickly and that's what loki does here is that it keeps everything linear which is really funny and really cool but it keeps everything uh the reason i say it's funny is because the show is all about breaking uh linearity <laughs> so uh, the irony behind it but it keeps everything linear and so as the plot progresses you're learning more and more about the world the world is still being built world building in the way that they uh the exposition is given out to you is done fantastically and until you get to the very end and you meet Khan, or who I presume is Khan, but I think in the show, uh, they call him the the one... What's his name? What's his name? Jonathan Majors. I'm trying to think of what they called him in the show. But Jonathan Majors' characters... Uh, the one who remained, or something like that, is what they called him. And he... He was fantastic just like jeff said the ending wasn't this big beam of light or it wasn't all time i mean it was all time trying to branch out and break up but it wasn't a catastrophe of oh we got to stop this before everything is gone no it was this dude sitting here and explaining hey you want to know why you don't have free will this is why you don't have free will because i'm protecting you but I've done this for a long, 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 long time, and I'm tired of it. You know, I just, I want to do something else. So I'm going to let you decide. I've looked through all the different ways, and I think you guys are the best ones for deciding what's going to happen. And he already knows kind of what the outcome is going to be. And he says it doesn't matter because, you know, the, the multiverse wars is going to happen, and he's just going to come back. Jeff says, sorry, my Wi-Fi crept out. I think we're good now. All right, I'm excited to have you back in here, man. I'm excited. Uh, Hello. Oh, there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I thought it was like, oh, because like I had my fan on, and I was like, maybe the the wind is like fucking trumping the mic or something. But no, it was because my Wi-Fi gradually went out. I looked up and uh, <laughs> I had red lights where there are usually blue lights on, on the router. So. Oh yeah, you were talking, and then you just you sounded like you went into a tunnel or something, and it was just like, bah, oh uh, weird. Bah, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I was like, oh. <laughs> Mainly, I've uh, just been talking about the plot, and I've been talking about how the plot is fantastic in this film. Um, but because, and I was just about to get into the, the negatives, but uh, I was saying how the ending. Uh, I was re reiterating what you were saying about how it's just exposition and that how they, they yeah. feed you exposition and lore throughout the entire show until the ending. Oh, here we are. Here we are. We're getting Peter rated. Raid. Nick DeRuy is rating with a party of 10. What's up? What's up? Toasty God redeems hydrate. Oh, I'll hydrate for you. Hello there. Well, hi, guys and gals. General oh. Kenobi, welcome, welcome. Thank you for the follow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> What's up? We're talking about Loki. It's spoilers. Hello there. Hello. Hey to you too, man. What's up? <laughs> it's a spoiler cast. General Kenobi for sure. Love it, love it, love it. If you um, if you haven't seen Loki, go watch it. We recommend it. If you have seen it, hello there, General Kenobi. Hey, <laughs> appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Uh, stick around. We're talking about it right here, right now. Oops, spoilers. Got a dip. Don't blame me, man. I don't blame you. Uh, this will be posted. This will be posted on our. Uh, we got a podcast. This will be posted on our on Spotify at Digital Roundtable. You can find us there on Spotify or your podcast service of choice. I think I'm going to start uploading these on YouTube as well. So sweet, good, love it. Keep up to date on the date. I appreciate the raid, man. You're awesome. <laughs> that Funko your wall, wall is, though. Your wall is pretty funky, man. It is, it is. I always wonder, like, what do these moments sound like on the podcast where we get rated? And then someone's just listening and they're like, oh, wow, they're 
he's talking to an audience right now, and I'm just going to wait till he gets back to the topic on hand. <laughs> That's yeah. what goes through my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are awesome. No, you're awesome. There's a Waluigi with the hearts. You guys are freaking great. You guys are freaking great. What so, nice people. I know, right? <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> no, you're awesome. He's like, we're going to go back and forth with this all day. <laughs> Toasty the god. All right. All you're right. both awesome. It. What do you usually do here? What do I usually do here? Well, to sum it up, everything. <laughs> Sun- Sundays uh, we do a podcast where we talk about all these kinds of things uh, tune in just about every- any other day of the week you can check out my schedule where I normally stream in the mornings where uh, we play RPG games usually on the hardest difficulty and then uh, follow me to keep up with my random streams where I will play multiplayer games with the boys and uh, we do all types of weird things. At least once a month, I try to do a challenge. And then another once a month, I am a uh, part of a community of other streamers where we go in and we, uh, you know, you get to you get to show off what you got, flex a bit a little bit, see some other streamers and uh, have fun with them. But uh, yeah, for sure. Once a month, I'll do a challenge. Last month, I ate some spicy wings while trying to play some games. I'll probably do it again with even spicier wings. But stay tuned. Join the Discord. Uh, we love having talking about stuff like that as well. Yeah, monthly events. Monthly events for sure uh tune in love having you love the conversations appreciate the raid yeah thanks man yeah the <clears throat> the ending of loki it, it it's it does a lot because it sets up so much for the rest of the, the new phase of the mcu gonna go to sleep now all right appreciate it man appreciate it thank you thank you And <laughs> that sounds like a lot of cool things. That sounds like a lot of cool things. Pokemon, other things like spelling bees for streamers in Jeopardy. I love that. I love that. That's awesome. Oh, what a, what a cool, cool things. Nice, nice little, nice little salesman elevator pitch right there. Love it. Good stuff. Yeah. Got it, got it. Go check it out. This guy's awesome. You don't know why? Because he raided me. That's why he's awesome. So go check out his channel. <laughs> <laughs> go check out his stuff. And the new excitement that this brings in is phenomenal. It, it, mm-hmm. it, 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 you, you know, as an audience member, if let's say you're a casual MCU fan, you're like, okay, well, how are they going to top Thanos? And then they, the anticipation is fantastic. Like Kang is going, is all new hype. Now, will he live up to that hype? You know, I hope so. But I didn't think I would be as excited for another villain as I was for Thanos. I knew who Thanos was, right? A lot of people uh-huh. know who Thanos is. I don't really know a lot about Kang. I know a little bit, like very little bit, but I don't really know a lot. General Kenobi, what's up? And <laughs> it, it's it's one of those things where, like, I'm kind of scared to get hyped about it. I'm I'm really scared to, well, to get hyped, but they haven't I, really let me down as of yet, right? Well, I think th- th- there's a couple of interesting things with the way that they handled it, and yeah. one is they they gave us what we what we quote unquote knew was coming but they also didn't give it to us right because and it's something that we kind of because there was an interesting thing that happened between episode five and episode six in terms of the fandom and the freeze frame zoom in got to find all the easter eggs piece the puzzle togetherness of the mcu and uh, I, I don't know if you had this thought in your head going into episode six, but it was interesting to to watch like on Twitter and on YouTube that there was this sort of collective thought process that happened going into the finale because episodes one through five, there are so many signs that point to Kang the Conqueror. Yes, there is. That 
we have Ravona Renslayer, that we have the the three timekeepers in the background, and and there are like little Easter eggs, little kind of uh, breadcrumbs that you're like, oh my god, it's got to be Kang. They got to be building up to Kang. Kang is behind the whole thing. And it was so interesting after episode five, the fandom kind of dialed it down a little bit on that because I think a lot because. I think a lot of us were remembering what we did with WandaVision and Mephisto. <laughs> yeah. That we were like, oh shit, like, are we getting ahead of ourselves? Like, fuck, uh, you know what? I bet it's not Kang. Like, like, and and a lot of people thought that it was just going to be another variant of Loki. Because yeah. throughout the season, that's kind of Loki's journey as a character is coming to terms with himself and how he fits into the galaxy essentially and how he is able to deal with others and so a lot of people were like nah it's it's it they're not gonna like kang is like a big bad level character it's not gonna be kang like we gotta rethink this and then fucking jonathan mazur shows up right at the beginning of the episode who we know like because of uh d23 last year has been cast as kang the conqueror yeah. in the next ant-man movie but i love what they did where it's like they gave it to us but this is not kang the conqueror this is not even kang according to what the show tells us because again like i remember we uh talked about this when we talked about mortal Kombat. if the if the show doesn't explicitly say it it doesn't matter what you know from issue whatever in the comics. If the show doesn't say it, it's not there. Yeah. So this is true. just a variant of Kang. Now the and, and and that was so that's thing one that I thought was very interesting that like they gave us the thing that we knew was coming, but they also didn't give it to us at the same time. The other thing that I find super interesting is that as fans, like we all know, like Kang is going to be the next big bad. And yeah. what I think is so fascinating is that if you if you look back at the Infinity Saga of phases one through three, Thanos isn't really there until Infinity War. He has the one shot at the end of Avengers where he turns and looks at the camera. He's got the, the teaser at the end of Age of Ultron where he puts on the glove and he says, fine, I'll do it myself. And he's got a tiny scene in Guardians of the Galaxy where he talks to Ronan the Accuser. Okay, I'm and glad you brought really, up Thanos. And it's really for, not until Infinity War that he like has a full character. But yeah. here, we get 40 minutes of, of Kang, Kang just yeah. monologuing. For sure. And, and that's, that's like the, the fantastic part. Yeah. And, and I'm glad you brought this up uh, for for two reasons. And like what I'm always going to do, I'm going to bring up Star Wars. Also, chat saying, uh, am I the only one excited for Moonlight? I, you know, I'm... Excited for Moonlight because my boy Poor Dameron's gonna be in there, right? Like I'm mm. <laughs> for that. I don't. I, <laughs> Moonlight's one of those heroes I only know about because I played Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So I'm excited because I'm more. It's more curious for Moonlight and his show. It is gonna be weird. It's gonna be a trip. Uh, Marvel's done a good job at bringing heroes that we don't know to life and bringing them back. So that's great. Love the Illuminati sign because of all the fan theories that's been going on with chat. Uh, I accidentally apparently <laughs> gave my mic the middle finger. Uh, could have had a family. Don't worry. It doesn't. I already got rid of them. So it's going. My thing is that <laughs> with Thanos, and, and this is what I liked. With Thanos, we, we see him with Loki. And Loki is not at all, like does not at all care. <clears throat> Loki is not mm -hmm. intimidated by him. And I said this on one of our other episodes is that we, they didn't really do the best job at making us scared of Thanos because with Darth Vader, like in Star Wars, they did a great job with the emperor because of Darth Vader, he's this force to be reckoned with. And he's mm -hmm. this menacing figure. He shows up, he kicks the rebels butts in the first um, episode of Star Wars and the new hope. And from then on, anytime he's on screen, He's always winning. And then we see him bow down to another dude. He's scared of someone else. It's mm -hmm. like, who is this guy? Right? Like, that's what they did with King. Like, King is this all-powerful force. We show, oh, the TVA, 
they use infinity crystals as paperweights. Okay, <laughs> whoever the TVA is the most powerful entity in the 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 known universe. But then it goes even further than that. You know, Kang is the TVA. Or Kang created the TVA. And the thing about Kang in the comic books is he's just a normal dude. He's Reed Richards, Mr. Fantastic, the guy that can stretch. Mm -hmm. He's his grandson, his great, 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 great grandson in the future. And what what's what amazes me is that he just uses technology. He just uses his time traveling technology. He's like the doctor. He just mm -hmm. goes around and uses tech time travel to just win at everything he wants to win at. That's the most I know about King. And what they do here, when Loki meets Kang, he is afraid of Kang. Mm -hmm. And this is Loki who had just got done with the Battle of New York and had just disrespected Thanos in front of his face. Yeah. Think about that. And, like, knowing that Thanos is a mad titan, or a titan... Mm -hmm. But he gained the title of being mad. Knowing that Thanos is a Titan and understanding what a Titan is, he then goes up to this normal dude who he can perceive as human and just be like, wait, don't mess with this guy. Like he is he's he's an issue. Like he's super powerful. So much so that whenever he gets back to whatever timeline he slipped back into. Mm-hmm. He goes running straight to Mobius, and he's just, he's afraid. Yeah, he's like, we're fucked. Right. Fuck it! <laughs> we're fucked. So, they do... I'm so glad you brought up Thanos, because the comparison... And, yeah, we didn't know a lot of... Bleh, 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 words. We didn't know a lot about Thanos. And the suspense for Thanos and wanting to know more about him, and then him getting, you know, some time to shine in a movie. That was cool. We all kind of learned to fall in love with him and like him. But such a better introduction with king mm -hmm. and this isn't even this is just a variant of king you know matter of speaking yeah. this isn't even that's what, king that's the thing that i am most excited about for kang the character moving forward because again like being a person who likes watching stuff but also making stuff and being so heavily immersed in the behind the scenes and the process and everything like i have to imagine for jonathan majors this is like the role of a lifetime because ostensibly you know depending on what they're gonna do with the character and the fact that we've already seen a variant ostensibly he could play 20 different versions of this character like th this is an actor's dream where you're just like yeah, I can play somebody who is like sinister and evil and sadistic. And I can play somebody who's like very charming and seductive. And I can play somebody who's like, like haggard. And at the end of his, you know, he can do whatever. Like, it's like, hey, you're going to get one job, but here's all the roles, even though you're playing the same character. Right. And it's, it's, uh, what's the M. Night Shyamalan movie? Oh, yeah. Split. Split. It's yeah. Spo that's I love seeing who's who's the actor who's the actor? X Men Origin James McAvoy Dave McAvoy he did a fantastic I love seeing him in Split I love seeing him in Glass oh my mm -hmm. god it's it's crazy how he steals the show and I hope we get the same thing uh, I hope we get the same thing with Jonathan uh, Majors yeah I hope, we, I hope we I hope there is a King the Conqueror but I also hope we run into other variants and we do get to see him doing just flexing his his acting muscles because I, I it it is a dream to be able to do something like that and also it can be a nightmare um <laughs> mm -hmm. because uh i don't know because i i i i feel like i want them to do that but i hope they don't do it too much i hope it they they have one king like to center and focus on for us as an audience to just uh, be in and, and go in and do do the thing with yeah I, 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 I you just brought up an interesting point because uh, something that I'm a little hesitant about and, and this is getting off topic of Loki and more about the MCU moving forward but it, it's still technically on topic 
the thing that I'm a little hesitant about is I want to make sure that even though we're do we've established the multiverse, the multiverse is happening, there's variants, there's like weirdness going on, right? I want to make sure that each movie and each show moving forward still tells somewhat of a complete story where our characters progress and it feels like we're developing the characters. And what I mean by that is uh, especially comes into play with the new Spider-Man movie where it's like, okay, multiverse. And so now we've got Jamie Foxx coming over from the amazing Spider-Man universe. We've got Alfred Molina coming back from the, the uh, original Spider-Man trilogy. Same and like yep. Sam Raimi is coming back and Tobey Maguire is coming back and Andrew Garfield and Emma and like all these. And I want to make sure like, okay, that's cool that all that we're doing multiverse and now it's like oh there's different versions of peter parker and there's villains from other uh, spider-man franchises coming in hey that's cool but i want to make sure that the coolness is not just hey look that's a thing i remember from something else like it, it's not just the the member berries is, is that the south park thing where it's like hey remember the thing <laughs> that you liked when you was a kid a member like, i want to make sure that it exactly like yeah and that's why hopefully it's just still just a good story and not just because again like everything we're that we know going into like dr strange and multiverse of madness like i've not heard a single thing about uh uh fuck what's his name uh chiwetel Ejiofor's character in dr strange moto mordo the, oh. the other sorcerer yeah 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 the guy that... it's like the, the yeah, like his, his or partner. Pie or whatever. Yeah, where he yeah. he's the thing is he makes an appearance in um Shang Chi Shang Shang. No, not not Wong. I'm talking oh, about okay. The, We're not talking about Wong. The black guy who. Um, oh, I know who you're talking. His he's gonna be the yeah the Mordo? one who trained him. Okay, yeah, I know who you're talking I for, about. I just forget the character's name. Uh, I'm looking it up. Got Sorry. it right here. Yeah, Mordo. Because the thing okay. at the end of Doctor Strange is like he goes to the guy who told Strange like where to go because uh, he was like playing basketball and he like takes his healing away and makes him injured again. He's like, the world is full of too many sorcerers. And it's like, oh, they're kind of setting him up to be the bad guy in the next movie. But knowing what I know about going into multiverse of badness, especially with everything that Loki just did. I'm like, is it, it is that character even going to have a storyline? Cause it feels like multiverse of madness is going to be kind of full. Cause Loki just set up a bunch of stuff. And we also know that Wanda is going to be involved in multiverse of madness to a certain degree. So it, it, it just feels to me like, like Dr. Strange two and Spider-Man three, are probably not going to be sequels to their previous films. It's just going to be, oh, this is all just one connected thing now, in yeah. a way. And, and I, I just want to make sure that, like, okay, that, that's cool that they're all connected, and I know obviously that's what you guys do, but I, I want to make sure that we're still telling a story about Peter Parker. We're still telling a story about Stephen Strange, as opposed right. to just like, hey, look at all this cool stuff that we brought in from the other movies. Right. Yeah, with the multiverse. I always segue into Marcus' voice when we do this podcast. That's fine. There's hey, nothing, nothing wrong with the Marcus' movie. voice. <laughs> and that's the thing whenever you're doing, they only have two hours. So I'm glad that they're they're making these TV shows. It is mm -hmm. adding more to people's homework with the TV shows because what in, next week we're getting the the what if scenarios. So now that the multiverse has been unleashed by Loki, yeah. now we're getting um, into the idea that oh, what if Captain America was Peggy, or what if uh, Doctor Strange did this, or Spider Man was Doctor Strange? Uh, mm -hmm. It. What if T'Challa was? Uh picked up by the ravagers instead of peter quill yeah yeah so it's those things that make it to where i i'm very like 
excited for, but exactly what you're saying. I don't want them to get too diluted with it because they're going to have so many characters to deal with. I don't want every two hours to turn into exposition. So the TV shows right. is a good transition for this new phase in the fact that, oh, maybe, maybe, you know, we use the TV shows just to explain and dump all this exposition like we did with Loki. Because can you imagine trying to fit the Loki universe or trying to explain the TVA, Kang, and I guess have a good story in a two hour, two and a half hour movie? That would just be ridiculous. Oh, if Loki was a movie instead right. of a series? Instead of a series. Oh, fuck no. It just wouldn't work. And I think what TV shows do great at is that they do let you expand and and pull out the details. Kind of like if Game of Thrones was a movie, it, mm -hmm. wouldn't, it wouldn't be as good. Even if they, they would have to do like movies of each character. And that was kind of brought up to by yeah. someone in chat in the past. But the, <laughs> the, the biggest concern for me is that they might oversaturate the market with that kind of stuff. So, like, mm -hmm. you're, you're telling me, oh, yeah, it will dilute the character's progression, which for me is a big problem with story. Like, I, I do not want story to be ever taken away, right? I'd rather have mm. poor set design. I'd rather have poor uh, CGI than bad story. And... Oh, yeah. Uh, but if they oversaturate it, like if they put too much, if there's too much world building, it can be all at once. It can be a mm -hmm. lot. So I think it's good that Marvel is doing this in a way. And I, I'm having my fingers crossed, but I think it's good that Marvel is doing this in a way where <laughs> it's like, you know, like when you're watching a, a TV show, it's like villain of the week or monster of the week if you're watching Supernatural or whatever. Right. So this is, you know, villain of the phase, <laughs> villain of, of the, yeah. the, the, the universe phase. So that instead of it trying to explain, because there's the, the comic books have been going on for so long. We don't, if they were to try to start everything at once and give us all these villains at once, it could be too much. I feel like Dormammu. In Doctor Strange's first thing, I mean, he seems so powerful. He's so powerful, he has his own dimension, right? So it, it's yeah. like he could have alone been an issue. He was technically never really dealt with. He was just, they just made a bargain. He just <laughs> fucked with them a little yeah. bit. And he was yeah. like, ah, I'm bored. I, yeah, I'm bored. I don't want to do this. He's impatient. He's, he's yeah. more impatient than Kang is, who literally was doing you know, messing around in that timeline for who knows how long, but mm -hmm. Dormammu, you know, they could easily just bring Dormammu back and have, and explain his, go deeper into the, the Sorcerer Supreme and all that other mystical stuff. And that'd be a whole nother couple of phases for Marvel. Um, mm -hmm. So them doing this in, I'm not going to say bite size, but in pizza size chunks is good, but it's scary because yeah. it, it's weird. I don't know if it's intentional, right? I don't know if WandaVision came out first. Obviously, it's intentional to set up Doctor Strange. But I don't know if it's intentional to set up the world building. Because WandaVision came out and everyone started to accept, oh, other realities can be made, right? And then mm -hmm. Loki comes out and it's like, oh, look, other realities. Oh, cool. And then these... Then this the the Marvel What If's gonna come out, and if people watch that, it's animated, so I feel like it's not gonna get as many views because it's animated. But I could be wrong. But then if people watch that, then it's like, oh, this is what other realities look like. And then Doctor Strange Multiverse comes in, and it's crazy, it's wild, it's even more crazy than Doctor Strange. But it's an mm -hmm. easier pill for people to swallow because they've been conditioned through these other things. Because they, I feel like they keep. Because WandaVision was crazy, but it's not as crazy as Loki, and I don't feel like Loki is going to be as crazy as the What If scenarios. And then I feel like Doctor Strange is going to be the craziest of them all. And yeah, I, I think they're different kinds of crazies. I don't, I don't know if WandaVision or Loki is is either one is more or less weird. It's just different kinds of weird. Because like, well. I'm thinking like of watching it. Watching WandaVision, like, esp like especially like put yourself watching that first episode again, like for the first time. 
you're like, it, what the fuck? Why are we in a sitcom? Uh, why have we not talked about the, like, why is Vision alive? What's going on? You know, like the mystery of it and the, the concept of it is weird. I agree. I agree. I, I'm looking at it mainly from like a casual general audience mm -hmm. perspective, not from someone who is expecting that kind of stuff, but from someone who's going into it more or less blind. Uh, and they're yeah. like, well, okay. I, I never watched, I don't want to go back and watch the other 10 Marvel movies. I saw Endgame and I saw Infinity War and they're pretty cool. I'm going to start watching. I'm going to just continue watching from here on mm -hmm. out. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I still feel like they're keeping those people in mind. And and I misspoke when saying that. But yeah, I do agree with you. It is different types of weird. It's different types of crazy. Uh, well, and, and you bring up a, a, a good point, which is the idea of the casual viewer, because... It, it's fascinating because Marvel has become this behemoth in terms of, you know, being a corporation. Like, we got to sell toys. We got to constantly sell merchandise and lunch boxes and Happy, Meal to, Happy Meals and all this kind of stuff. But I, I really, like, I, it, it's crazy to still be pondering and, and wondering about this, but... I mean, I, I think you and I can agree. We've reached a point that, like, you can't just go into any of these things blind anymore yeah. to, to get the full experience. Like, there's yep. no way that you can watch Loki and fully appreciate it. There's no, I mean, no, no, I, I, no I was going to well, no, I was going to say Black Widow. Like, you could go into just the post credit scene won't make sense. But even at the beginning, like, for example, when, when they're getting on the plane and David Harbour, like, picks up that trailer and, like, chucks it, you know, you're like, like, you have to know what the super soldier serum is because they don't explain that. Even no. in the context of the movie, they don't explain that. They're just like, and he's just a super soldier. Go, Accept okay, it. I guess he's a super soldier. Cool. Yeah. I can move on now. I guess he's um, just super strong. Well, okay, here's here's the funny thing. I'm going to challenge I think your that's end credit where scene. we are in, you know. Because uh, that end credit scene in Black Widow was supposed to come out. Black Widow was supposed to come out before Falcon and Winter Soldier. And so you were right. supposed to get that end credit scene before you got the Falcon and Winter Soldier one. Well, n no, I, I just mean if, if you have never oh, seen any I get of what these you're movies saying. or yeah, yeah, shows, yeah, yeah, yeah. And suddenly she hands over the iPad, you're like, who the fuck is the guy with the haircut? Yeah, yeah. Who, wait, who's she, Hawkeye? She, who's wait, the... she died? Wait, is she dead now? That's <laughs> she weird. Did. Wait, huh? You That's know, a good so, point. Like, yeah. That's a good point because I was but, sitting but I was next saying, to even people. If, even if you remove that scene and you just watch the movie, you still have shit like That's this messed you know, up. Like, yeah. Like when even in the scene in the convenience store when uh when Natasha is like, "Why didn't you ever try to contact or, or I forget the the setup, but uh Yelena says something like well, you know, we didn't want to deal with any of the the other guys, you know, like the god from space. So it's like, wait, there are gods from space in this world? Because I thought we were just watching a Mission Impossible movie. I thought right. we were watching a Bourne movie. The people next to me when I was uh, in the theater, they they did that did come up at the end credit scene. They're like, wait, what is she talking about? What's going on? And like the sisters were saying, well, the, he's from the other movie. You have to watch the other movies to understand. So yeah, I, yeah. you, you hit it right on the head. It's yeah. for sure that way. But, but again, I, I think that that's where we are. I, I think really like, honestly, truthfully, I think we have been in this territory since Ultron because Ultron is really the movie where like, especially because of, Scarlet Witch playing with everyone's mind, like Thor has a vision of Ragnarok. And yeah. Steve the the stuff happening with Steve and Tony feeds into Civil War. Right. Um and, and et cetera, et cetera. So like it, it, we've known that it it's just they're all sequels to each other. Mm -hmm. Like and Iron Man and Captain America, like they're not their own separate franchises. This is a twenty Twenty six property franchise, right? At this at this moment, between think, the movies and the shows. What I think is good, though, about this is I think we are in a. I'm sorry. I know we're in a we're in a time period of of cinema where there's sequel after sequel after sequel after sequel, where companies keep milking 
assets as much as they can and getting as much as they can out of it. And what Disney has done is they've taken this culture that's been breeding and that people have kind of been complaining about, or at least I've been complaining about, and they've turned it into something that can be uh, easier dealt with or easier for them to make money off of us. Uh, Because when we have Star Wars going up to episode nine, but there's like 12 different movies, it's, it it can be weird, right? It can be really, it's really disjointing because those stories don't connect all together because there's a lot of uh, skipping through time and we can consider them reboots. But none of the Marvel films are reboots, but they can still say, hey, we make a lot of money off of this stuff and we're still in this culture of like, let's let's keep, you know, milking this until it's it's dry. But let's do it in a way where audiences can continually continuously stay engaged uh, like it is a TV show. Like Mm -hmm. these are these phases are really just seasons. That's all they are. They're just seasons. And this yeah. is just a really big giant TV show that has a lot of money backing it. Uh, and it's cool that they're doing it, that it's evolving that way. And I'm not going to lie uh, when I say that I I, ho- I would much rather have cinemas and medias evolve in this way than the the way that's you know that star wars did right in the sense that it was just oh well this made us a lot of money 30 years ago can we just do it again (laughs) yeah so that's that's cool uh but 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 yes long story short exposition done correctly uh can be really good for this next phase in marvel uh the plot worked out well characters in loki like character design uh worked out really well i want to know i have to know controversial statement coming up your opinions on sylvie and loki um in what i I think i know where you're going but i will go ahead and ask the question uh in what context like just them as in, in the in the romantic in the romantic I mean, I I thought it was adorable. I think, well, because here's the thing. I don't know if it was romantic. I don't think so either. I Because, because, because of what happens. Like, yes, she pulls exactly. him in for the kiss. And, the, it, it, and it's because of the fucking score. And I loved it because I did not want them to be romantically involved. Not because of the reason a lot of people didn't want them to be romantically involved because it was weird or anything like, oh, my God, they're basically just in love with themselves. Like, isn't that isn't that like because th- th- it brings up this whole discussion of like, if you fall in love with a variant of yourself, is that like if you have sex with a variant of yourself, is that technically masturbation? Like, And it was like this whole like rabbit hole of like. You're basically in love with yourself if you've, you know, that sort of thing. The reason mm-hmm. I didn't, and, and, you know, I'm the type of person, I don't give a fuck. Like, if you're in, you're into what you're into, like, no judgment, you know, as long as you're not hurting anybody, no kink, shame here, whatever. But the reason I did not want them to get romantically involved is because I just, I, I, I've seen too many movies and TV shows do that wrong where they introduce character they introduce a romance between characters because they can't think of any other reason why these two characters should be in the same room together. Yeah. If that it, makes sense. It's very generic. It's been done a million times, yeah. Yeah. Like we need we need a romantic love interest just because, whatever. And I but, had the same doubts and the same worry in my mind as well. And the reason why I'm gonna single out the score here. Is because when they kiss, the score that kicks in is so fucking cheesy and exaggerated. It's this big triumphant, like, nah, nah, nah. this is the moment we've been waiting for. And I was watching it going like, like, who, who, like, 
composer, like, why did you do that? That sucked. Fuck off. And then Sylvia immediately is like, oh, fuck, I forget what her line is, but she's like, you know, but I don't trust you or whatever. And I was like, thank you. Oh my God. Okay. I, I am. Ne- and then I mind melted immediately with the composer where I was like, yes, you overplayed your hand with the score to distract me from the fact that it was a deception from the beginning. So sorry, that was a very long winded way of answering your question. No, I, I, I it. loved it because I didn't want them to be romantically involved, but they weren't. She kisses him as a distraction. Yeah. I don't think she was ever romantic. Like I, their relationship is totally platonic, I think. And that's what really fascinated me is like, you know, even the conversation that uh, Loki has with Mobius in the the interrogation room where it's like, are you in love with her? Like, I think he just cares deeply. And for Loki, that's kind of the point. Well, no, is that he, loves, he loves he loves her, right? They, they tried to make that as blatant as possible. And they use that to trick you into into that wanting them to get together so that there can be that plot twist at the end, right? Like I'm for sure I I, I will bet that Loki loves her. The thing is for me is throughout the MCU every time Loki learns to love himself, he dies. Mm -hmm. And I think that is, and it's again, I was talking about this while your mic was messing up. The whole thing about like Loki is he's stuck in a loop and he's trying to gain his own free will, but also in Norse mythology, Loki is also stuck in a time loop. And so it's mm. it's this amazing thing of like Loki has a purpose in this universe, but every time he tries to break free from that purpose, he gets reset. And I love the idea that okay, well, in Thor Ragnarok. It wasn't that he learned to love his brother. He's always loved his brother. He loves his, he loves how ignorant and how arrogant his brother is, but he loves his brother. He loves his father. It's he, he doesn't ever kill Odin. He always gets rid of Odin. He doesn't ever kill Thor. He always tricks Thor, right? Because he Mm -hmm. loves them. That's his family. He loves his mom. We learned that in. All right. I'll see you later. Toasty the God. Uh, he learns that in what's that? What's the second movie called? Dark Elves, Dark World, <laughs> Dark World, <laughs> <laughs> featuring, Dark Elves. featuring Dark Elves. We learn that in Dark uh, Dark Worlds that you know he loves his mom and Loki is really attached and he's attached to this family. So in Thor Ragnarok, when Thor's talking to him and saying like you know you never grow, you've never changed, little brother. Uh, it, it, I think Loki realized. He realized what Mobius tells him in the first episode of Loki. So Thor Mm. Ragnarok, it takes Loki longer in, in, in the, in the Thanos timeline because there's no one there to really guide him the way that he doesn't have a therapist. Essentially. He doesn't have a therapist. He just goes off Mm. and does his thing. And you know, Odin isn't known to be the best of father. You don't listen to him. He'll banish you to another planet. That's that, yeah. That's right. <laughs> or I mean, he did it to his son Thor. He did it to his daughter. So Loki learns to love himself in Thor Ragnarok, and then dies to Thanos immediately because he he now loves himself. He now self respects himself. So now he can do that to other people because you got to be able to take care of yourself before you can take care of other people. And that's his whole stick is he wants to rule over people and take away their choice of free will because he doesn't want them to essentially go through what he went through and he feels like he can create the perfect utopia if he's in charge and nobody has to suffer through the pain that he does but he's going at it in a really messed up sadistic way mm-hmm. and that's why i really like the first episode of loki the first two episodes because you get to see him get emotional and go through these things, but at a quicker pace. And for me, I wasn't really like, oh, boo-hoo, right? Like, I can understand why other people felt that way. But for me, when I was watching it, I understood, okay, well, he was on this path anyways. So who cares if we if we fast track it? Let's see. This, this is a chance for us to see <laughs> what this Loki 
um, is going to do because it's just redundant for us to watch him grow again. So let's see what developed Loki does. How does he look when he's developed and what are the actions that he will take? And will he stay on this path or will he be like, oh, this is too hard. Let's go back to doing what I was doing before. And we see that he wants to stay on this path and he finds reasons to stay on this path. And I think Sylvie is kind of like that beacon of hope of just you can do this for him and and mobius makes fun of him for it but that's because mobius is emotionally vulnerable and needs to give up uh command of the enterprise at that time and place uh but mobius understands him because mobius dealt mm -hmm. with loki his entire for what he knows his existence for most of his existence he's dealt with loki's so he understands yeah. loki's almost better than they do and i love that scene that sylvie because we think that Sylvie's evolved. We, we really think that Sylvie's like different from all the other Lokis. And right. that her and our Loki is are different from everyone else. And so whenever they go into purgatory, they meet up with, you know, the president Loki and Thor Loki and kid Loki and old Loki. Mm -hmm. And I really love old Loki in that scene because it shows, okay, this is what you would have become because you didn't um if you never would have changed in your life you would have been sad mm -hmm. the the reality of it is you would have actually been sad and then even thor loki who's lying about getting the infinity gauntlets and stuff like that he still doesn't seem like he has fulfillment in his life the only people that seem like they have fulfillment in their life is sylvie and our loki however as the show progresses you see more and more they hint at it here and there but just so little just bit by bit sylvie is not fulfilled she is on a revenge she is obsessed with revenge and getting what she thinks she deserves just like how loki is obsessed with getting what he feels like he deserves that he was robbed of and she's right there and she cannot deny who she actually is but Loki has been on the hero's journey and he mm -hmm. and and we were able to see him fall in love. But it's to, me, it's to fall in love with Sylvie because it is literally a metaphor. It is literally a, a physical representation of him falling in love with himself. But Sylvie doesn't love him back. Yeah. And she she plays with him. Exactly. And she, she sees that. And she uses that. She manipulates that from him. And you, you kind of feel that, right? You kind of you see the hesitation from her from wanting to express the feelings back. And then in the end, like you said, there's this huge crescendo. And she betrays him. Yeah. And you as the audience feel betrayed as well. And I think you don't get that a lot. Like, yeah, it's been done to the ground. I also think it's because... Two of the writers, like one of the writers was LGBTQ and then mm. another writer was like a straight white man. Mm -hmm. And so it was think, a writer on Rick and Morty, which totally yes. makes sense, given all the timey wiminess of, right. of this show. And I think those writers kind of like not so much butted heads, but, you know, the I, I definitely feel like one of the writers wanted something generic and another writer wanted something not so generic so i know yeah <laughs> it ended up crossing over really well in my opinion and it's like one of my favorite things was their relationship and as much as an audience member as an audience member i hated i was so heartbroken to see sylvie um betray him but as a critic i love it I'm, I'm right there with you, and Jeff. I love I, what they did. I think also as as a fanboy, because I'm like, oh my god, like this is terrible. Like what he what Kang is describing is is terrible. That's like end of the world shit. But I kind of want to see the multiverse. So could you please kill him now? <laughs> Chekhov's gun. You, know? you can't just say it and then it not happen. It's it exactly it, the second it, it it gets put out into the void, it has to come into existence. It's, exactly. And you know, you know what's going to happen. You know, you know, okay, this guy has to die. Like, the universe is going to be, you already know, but how's it going to happen? What's going right. to be the thing that does it? It's beautiful. I, I think uh, I think the characters were done really well. The only character I didn't really like 
R- real quick, hold that thought. Yeah. Because there's something that I want to read you, which okay. is uh, it, this is not like an article or anything. I just wanted to pull this up. It's a it's dialogue from the show. Okay. But it's the scene in episode three, Lamentis, when they're on the train and they're like sitting at the like the little booth and they're talking about where they talk about love. You know, oh, love. it doesn't so he explain love like a dagger, and okay, that's well, a, it's that's foreshadowing. Oh, that's what I'm getting at. So I want to read this because what he says to her in that scene basically describes that final showdown where they fight and then they kiss and then she betrays him. So here it is. Loki says, love is a dagger. It is a weapon to be wielded far away or up close. You can see yourself in it. It's uh, It's beautiful until it makes you bleed. But ultimately, when you reach for it, it isn't real. So love is a dagger. It's a weapon to be wielded far away or up close. Far away, meaning when they're both using their magic on each other. And up close, which is the moment he teleports in front of her right before she's about to kill Kang. Yeah. And obviously, the line, you can see yourself in it. Like, yeah, they're both Loki. Right. Like, they're variants. I don't get the line. I don't get how a dagger isn't real, though. Well, like, that, because it's deception. Because he thinks that, b- because he says ultimately, when you reach for it, the kiss being the reach, it isn't real. No, I get. I get the she metaphor. She betrays him. I don't get how the dagger isn't real. Maybe I'm taking it too literal. Like when you reach well, for well, a dagger. Like, well, no, like because it, like when she says it. It isn't real. She's talking about love. Oh, okay, okay. I gotcha, I gotcha. Because he's saying, like, metaphorically, love is a dagger. So, in effect, a dagger is all the stuff that he says, but also love is all the stuff that he says. Yeah. You see yourself in love. Love is beautiful until it makes right. you bleed. No, I get the love part. when you reach for love, it isn't real. Because he's yeah. like, oh, shit, I thought it was real, but now I'm in this alternate timeline and it's weird. Yeah. But yeah, I, I love shit like that. When you watch a scene and you're like, oh yeah, that was like a nice scene. But then you after re-watch it. you know the end of the story and you go back, like there's a, I won't like get into the details because that's for a separate thing, but there's a great one in uh, Shaun of the Dead as well. When uh, early in the movie, they're at the bar and Ed, the character that Nick Frost plays, is like, all right, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to go here and we're going to do this. Blah, 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 blah. And he says this whole little thing. And Sean is like, no, 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 no. But he literally describes exactly what happens in the rest of the movie. <laughs> and it's like completely unintentional because they're both drunk. But it, like when you go back and watch it, you're like, oh, shit. Like he says everything that they're going to do this when is... the zombie outbreak happens. It's cute. That's great. I also love whenever... The girl tells his buddy, like, you're going to end up uh, in the shack or something. Or the roommate tells his buddy, you're going to end up just playing video games in the shack. Oh, and yeah. At the end of the movie. Like, that's... that's exactly what happens. Chained up. Yep, that's exactly what happens. <laughs> wow. I didn't even realize that foreshadowing until you brought it up. I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. And they're talking about love. And that's crazy. I think the dynamic between Sylvie and Loki were fantastic. It it made me want to come back to see where their relationship was going to go. Whether it was platonic mm-hmm. or not, I didn't care. I was invested in the two of them. I was yeah. solely invested in the two of them, I think. It, and kind of what you said, like, who cares if they're, like, if they get romantically involved. I do also want to say, they're I think... They're technically two different people, so... Yeah, they're two different. They're Fuck variants. You, if you think it's weird. They're they're variants. Yeah. Like who who cares? Also, <laughs> and, and, and I don't I, know why we have to still say this. They're fictional characters. They don't exist. <laughs> they're I'd, not real. Look, I'd sleep with myself. Somebody wrote them and actors played them. <laughs> I'd do it. I'd sleep with myself. If there was a female version of me out there, I'd do it. Well, now if it was like if it was, it had to be from an alternate dimension, right? Because it's different if it's like a twin. Oh, that's different. Yeah, that's like different. if you are genetically the same, then 
yeah, that's this different. <laughs> <laughs> this is an alternate timeline, like interdimensional. Thing. Yeah. Uh, as, uh, the I think Disney was toying with it to see how to gauge audiences' reactions, though. I couldn't help but have that that's thought probable. as I was like watching. I was like, "There's no way this is too out there for it to for them." Like, like Disney, they. They play it too close to their chest, you know. Mm-hmm. They don't. They don't go out there that hard, that that fast. They don't make those types of decisions like that. Uh, with you know, they don't put their money on the line <laughs> that quickly. Yeah. Uh, like even even that conversation on the train, like it, it's. I, I wish I had the the script in front of me, but when <laughs> Loki confirms that he is bisexual, like he doesn't say like in a sentence like i love men it, it's something more of like not not all, like well not it always was like, girls you must have had girls you something. must have had all the princesses coming after you and he was like yeah 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 and she was like and princes and he was like those two yeah 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 so you know they're they're getting there i mean it was a big deal especially for <clears throat> sorry i was choking is a big deal, especially for. Uh, well, don't do that. Disney and for the and that whole episode, Lamentis. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's LG or that's a. Uh, I said this before. I forgot what it's called. It's uh, the lighting. That's a. Uh, that's by lighting or whatever. Oh, it's bisexual yeah, yeah, yeah. lighting. It's bisexual lighting. Like they did the same thing in Atomic Blonde, and they did. I've heard this. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh. It. It's like I, a specific kind of <clears throat> like lighting in the background that's very right. pro LGBTQ. I and I haven't really heard anyone else bring that up. I huh. uh, <clears throat> I'm kind of proud of myself for catching that. Some nice. uh, lament since we're talking about lamentus, I want to talk about some things that really puzzled me that I thought they were going to explain. So Loki in okay. the comic books is kind of OP. Like, mm-hmm. ridiculously. He's worthy. He's a worthy challenge for the Avengers. Let's just say that. I'm going to put yeah. this... I'm going to explain to you, because I don't know how strong you know what Loki... Comics Loki is. Spider-Man. Uh, And Spider-Man's depicted really well in the MCU. So we're going to go off of Spider-Man. Spider-Man against comic book Loki, sitting there punching Loki with everything he's got, everything he's got, just nonstop, nothing. nothing, absolutely nothing. Like Spider-Man does not have a chance. He's a literal spider to Loki. <laughs> it is, that is how like ridiculous, Thor has hit Loki with all his strength, with Mjolnir in hand. So strong that it could have leveled a mountain, didn't even knock Loki off his feet. That's, in the that's face, a too OP. In the face with Mjolnir. <laughs> uh, yeah, Loki's Spider-Man, strong. Sure, but Thor with Mjolnir—that's that's too OP. He's ridiculously strong in the MCU. Okay, so that's comic book Loki. They do him some service, some justice in the MCU. He again gets picked up by the Hulk and slammed boom, 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 boom. And then, you know, they put him in handcuffs and he can still walk and he doesn't require any medical treatment. And then he takes an explosion to the face (laughs) when Hawkeye shoots the arrow and he grabs it. it. So why in this TV show does he struggle against an everyday American redneck? Like what? Or an American (laughs) trucker? Why does he need to block some guy's punch with a with a Roomba? Yeah, to the point that he's like, Roomba, please save me. What is going on? And then on top of that, why? Like, he shouldn't. The TVA shouldn't even. I get when he's at the TVA headquarters, like. No problem whatsoever, okay? I understand when they first tagged him and bagged him and they, like, slapped him across the face and 
he slowed down and his cheeks were flabbing and stuff like that. I was like, okay, 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 cool, cool. Like, they're showing, okay, these guys can take on Loki. But then afterwards, why is he, like, on Lamentis having to do flips and tricks and all this other stuff? And it's like they forgot how powerful they was and they kept nerfing him and nerfing him and nerfing him. Because in Thor Ragnarok, they do get help, which is, I love right. get help. They literally because they know they're invincible. They know they're invincible, so they throw he throws his brother at the guards, and they go toppling over. And like it's Thor, the guy who can literally. I mean, in Dark World, I don't know if you remember Dark World that much, but they were fighting. I never saw Dark World. Okay, so there's in Dark World, he's literally fighting. They they have a Dragon Ball Z fight. They have a Matrix Three fight. No. And he's like, he's getting punched and Thor's getting punched through mountains and he's going and getting punched through boulders and stuff like that. Like it's, it's intense and Thor's picking up stuff and throwing it. So whenever he throws Loki, he's throwing him with some force to just immediately knock out these guys and mess up their stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious as to where does that get expanded? And then on Lamentus, when they're doing that one shot, which... I enjoyed. I had fun with it, but I do agree with you. It 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 was it wasn't. I feel like it could have been better, but that's nitpicking. Um, he catches a building with his mind. He and like he's so confident about it too. He says, "I got this" to Sylvie and just catches it. Like when was Loki what? Tele- telekinetic? Like, I was like, what? Like, your power? You can't just pull powers out of nowhere. Does Loki have telekinesis? Because, like, in, in, in the episode before with the Roomba and everything, like, he brings a vacuum cleaner to himself with his mind. Yeah, he has, he has, it's, I mean. But had we seen that in any of the movies? He has. He does it's, illusions. It's magic. He does. It's he's magic. the. He's the, the the wizard school of illusion, <laughs> not the one that does telekinesis. <laughs> right, right. It's. I mean, I don't know, dude. I just don't. He caught a building. He caught a it's building, like, and then he put it it's back. Like they forgot a little bit. <laughs> I. Do, it just felt. Yeah, weird. he didn't just stop it and then sidestep it so that it fell to the side. He. Just Sent the fucker back up into the air. <laughs> he sent it back up into the air. I was like, why are you having issues fighting these guys if you can catch a building? Well, I mean, I I remember very explicitly the the climactic battle of Guardians Volume 2 being the point where I started to look at all of the MCU and go, okay, the the power levels are very unclear here. <laughs> Yeah, like, like even even the even earlier in Guardians two when they like crash land on Ego's planet and uh, <laughs> I forget, is it is it Drax or Gamora who's like tailing at the end? They're like tethered on it's like a, a wire. It's yeah, Drax. and it's like okay, I get it. Like he's he's an, he's not human, but how impervious to pain and how resist like what are the damage resistances i need i need the stat i need the 5e stat block right on all the characters in the mc you know what i mean where it's just like okay like that's the thing like i I get it we're all sort of enhanced in some way but like if if i punch like i i just want to know if i punch Iron Man and Captain America and Thor and the Hulk. What is the pain level that each of them feels? You know right. what I mean? Right. Like there, there's no gauge on anybody in the MCU. They're all just superheroes. And well, I think to, to, to go some with what of you're them, saying, some of them are like, gauged better than others because going because it's like whenever I was watching Justice League with Caitlyn. And she didn't understand just how strong Superman was, no matter how many times, like, I expressed it to her. And then she's she right. seen Wonder Woman, and she's like, well, I thought Wonder Woman had super strength. And I was like, yeah, but Superman is, like, he's just busted. Like, you don't understand. And I knew how durable Drax is, because Drax can fight the Hulk. Or he has fought the Hulk in the comic books. And so I know Drax is, like, ridiculously powered. But then he kind of gets punked by... Um, 
what's his name? The destroyer in the first get in the first movie. Uh uh Ronan? Ronan the accuser. Ronan the accuser, yeah. not the destroyer. He gets punked yeah. by Ronan the accuser, and that's to tell the audience, oh, Ronan's really powerful, guys. Not even Drax can take him. But if most of the audience doesn't know anything about Drax, that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, well and and Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> but so like, I get where you're coming from where what is the scale? It, what, it, what? Where are these guys at? I need to know their powers. I just because in Iron Man, you you know Tony Stark's a human, and you know when he's testing out the suit, and you and then he goes out to the Middle East to go save these people, and you see him take a shot from a tank, and you're like, okay, the Iron Man suit's really durable. So then at the end fight, you know how strong a giant Iron Man is. <laughs> when they're, when anti Iron Man is because they're fighting each other, right. and we've already seen what the Iron Man suit is capable of and what it's not capable of, and they do a callback to it when he flies up into the sky, and that's how he kind of ultimately defeats the dude because he didn't do the coding for the icing, and right. but they don't do that for the other films. Like I well, still I, don't I know think... why Thor doesn't just shoot lightning at everybody. Well, he, here here's the answer, I think. And it's it's not an answer that they have explicitly given. I think I'm, I'm talking just pure movie logic. Because we had this same discussion when we were talking about Fast and Furious versus Die Hard. You know, where John McClane at the end of every Die Hard movie is fucked up. And <laughs> yeah. fucking Fast 9 is, okay, cool. They can be in space with whatever. Duct tape. <laughs> uh, yeah, with duct tape. <laughs> um, but I think the answer, because because you're right. Like in the first Iron Man, it's 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 the first time. It's the first outing. It's the first movie, and you have the first Iron Man suit is this giant hunk of junk that he's like in the cave with, and then when he crash lands, like all the the pieces like scatter throughout the desert and it's like very rudimentary and it's clunky and it's 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 jerry-rigged basically yeah i think to answer your question with loki is Ooh. at this point there are sorcerers there are aliens and they invented time travel so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Like, here's, literally, it, the, like, no, no, well, it's my favorite because... line. It's my favorite line to say. May the power okay. of plot devices compel you. Yes, because <laughs> specifically when it comes to Endgame and the fact that they built a time machine, I don't think you could have done time travel in Iron Man Two. No, but because of the fact that by the time you get to Endgame, there are aliens. And there are sorcerers. Fuck it. There might as well be time travel. Like the fact that they build a time machine, I was like, okay. Like, do, uh, no, no, no. And then, like, because I, I, I watched it, uh, like, on one of my repeat viewings, I was watching it with my mom, and she was just like, time travel? Really? And I was like, did you not see the other movies? <laughs> like, time travel's, like, the least. Uh, 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 crazy thing that they possibly could do at this point so yeah i think that's that's and it sucks because i wish that there was there was more attention paid to okay like i i, I wish i just knew like if loki gets shot what is happens? he hurt yeah i don't know he's fine <laughs> is, I've, is I've, it... I've seen him do so much i've seen all of these people do and and again like i'm sorry i'm, I'm speaking in broken sentences you're but good, my brain like synapses are just firing because i'm like <laughs> i don't it's the same thing with fucking fast nine like we talked about like i don't feel any tension in these fucking movies anymore or, or these sh like i don't there's there's no stakes like I, I I I I'm going off topic to talk about Black Widow just very briefly, but like that entire climax, when the 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 the, the station, the red room, is breaking apart and falling, and you have Taskmaster, you have Natalie and or Natalia, and you have uh, uh, Yelena, and they're all falling, and nobody gets hit by a, a flying piece of debris. This, right. this thing 
is is exploding. I think in the air. You and bring nobody up, gets hit by holy it. And crap, I'm just holy. like, why do I give a fuck about any of these people? I'm having a moment. I'm having a moment. You <laughs> you brought up a fantastic point because they 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 when they issue those things, it's no stakes, and they're doing this thing where it's like, oh well, the audience likes explosions and bloods and guts, and let's give them let's give them something to look at. Let's give them something to be like, ooh, ah, and you know, for a casual movie goer, maybe there's suspense. Maybe she won't make it alive, right? Especially if you've never seen any of the other movies. But right. I think that's what's so great, and you already said this. I think you are one hundred percent right. That is what's so great about the last episode of Loki because it's not explosions and. And and will this yes. work? Will this happen? It's exposition. It's oh my gosh! Like, how are they going to make this decision? What's the decision they're going to make? How is this going to affect the rest of the MCU if they make this decision? Like, I do not care because there there are no stakes. There, the story does not progress anymore if there is a final fight scene. And the way they do the fight is, oh well, Sylvie and Loki are fighting each other and. Well, will they, that's the will they be able it's between to the trust two good each other? Guys. Right. Will they the be able to trust each other? The fight is between the two other? good guys. Uh-huh. Can and they the get bad past guys their just differences? Watches. It's so great. It's like it's like Return of the Jedi. But the best thing I can I can relate uh-huh. it to is okay. Princess Bride. So like Princess Bride, there is no stakes between um Indigo and Wesley. Whenever they have their first duel, <clears throat> they have a gentleman's duel. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things you can nitpick about the duel. They're using rapiers when they should be using it as cutlasses or whatever like that. Or they're using rapiers like cutlasses, but it's reminiscence to the old swashbuckler pirate black and white right. films. And the choreog- choreography is there to tell a story. We all know Wesley's going to beat this guy. It's so early on into the film there's no real reason why Wesley shouldn't beat this guy, but the story that is being told and the between the two of them is amazing. We learn about Wesley's fighting prowess. We learn about Indigo's past. We learn about Wesley's character. The fight has no stakes, but it gives us so much information. The same thing can be said, and I've said this before to you, Jeff, about <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean uh, uh, the 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 curse of the black pearl between uh, Jack Sparrow and Will Turner. Will Turner. Thank you. That yeah. though, so the Princess Bride and and Jack and uh, Pirates of the Caribbean Black Pearl. Those are some of my most favorite fight scenes ever in movies. Why? Because they use action to tell a story that cannot be told through the dialogue. The action serves a purpose for character progression. And any time you can tell a story that uh, that provides to the plot, so fantastic. One, it gives those those testosterone junk or those testosterone adrenaline junkies, be that mm-hmm. boy or girls, that only want to see explosions and bubblegum being chewed and asses being kicked. It gives them what they want. But at the same time, it also gives, you know, softies like me and you, Jeff a substance to 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 fuel ourselves with as we drain it more <laughs> more please uh, because we learn a lot about jack sparrow in the fight with will turner especially and I, i'm gonna cut it short i know i'm getting off topic especially when he has the <laughs> chance to shoot will turner and will's like you're cheating you know that's cheating you're using a gun he's like i'm a pirate dude what do you expect yeah. <laughs> but instead when the second will Turner right. gets <laughs> right. Pirate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the second Will Turner gets distracted, he knocks him out. So we know that Jack, we, we, we learn a lot about Jack through that. We learn a lot about Will. When Will goes up, he sees that Jack doesn't have good footing. Like he's really good at with his sword, but his footwork is not that great. So he mm-hmm. puts himself in a more advantageous position and, and forcing Jack to fight him in, in better grounds. And we see that, okay, Will's smart. He thinks not only for himself, but he, he's he's clever dude. <clears throat> and he's also an honorable dude. He, yeah. there, There's many points where he could have beat Jack, but he doesn't because it's dishonorable. Yeah. We learned and so same much. Thing with Jack. We, yeah. we know that he will kill somebody, but if he doesn't have to kill somebody, he won't. He won't. Yeah. And, yeah. and 
that scene, because before, think about the scene where we saw Will beforehand, not including Kid Will. Think about, really, we just know that he's a dork. He's a blacksmith that has a big crush on Elizabeth, and he's Uh kind of a dork because he accidentally breaks a candle on a wall. That's what we know about Will. But then we learn so much more about his character in that scene, and then to see him transition into, I'm a pirate, I have pirate's blood, uh, is, (laughs) you know, it it, it helps. Uh, Mm -hmm. You you know the character more because he doesn't get as much screen time as Captain Jack Sparrow. This (laughs) translates to... um, the final scene or the final episode in Loki because we know a lot about Sylvie and Loki but <clears throat> we take all that exposition and all the stuff that we learned about them and the foreshadowing with the dagger and they're star-crossed lovers going at, going at it mm-hmm. uh, in, in this room and yeah it's it's what you said Jeff it's two main characters it's two protagonists fighting in front of the antagonist fighting in front of the villain and it just works but what doesn't work is that fight scene on the train. Like, that's just, like, I didn't need that. That scene can be cut, and it doesn't change uh, the like story the guards, whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, yeah. the only thing that scene tells me, okay, I guess it can't be cut. I, I guess it could, I don't know. I'm going to argue with myself here. Uh, <laughs> when Loki says, I'm full, I'm very, very full, you know, that's what they say uh, instead of being drunk. Right. Because he's the god of mischief. His whole stick is he ruins plans. He doesn't stick to a plan. He doesn't stick to a script. His mm-hmm. whole existence is to ruin a plan. And that's that's showing that, oh, Loki is a liability, not only to others, but to himself. <clears throat> no, they didn't need that fight scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They could, it could have just been the guards catch them and they, well... Yeah, no, I guess the fight scene's... The, it's just poorly choreographed, okay? I <laughs> The fight scene no, fits I'm, in the in the story, but you get what I'm saying. I, I, I'm laughing because I'm, I'm trying to listen to what you're saying, but Louis is just so demanding of your attention right now. He is. He wants to be loved on right now, and I'm, I'm He's working. He's just all up on your shoulder. <laughs> I just happened to click away from IMDb and click onto the stream tab, and I was like... Give that guy some lovings. What? Uh, yeah, the choreograph for the most part is it's okay. I think the CGI was done really well, and I think the um, the score, the music was fantastic in the show. Dude, I, I am so glad that the theremin is at the fourth. Like, the, dude, there's people who know what a theremin is now because of this show. And that makes me... Hold on, me... explain to me what a theremin is. Okay, holy shit. I, I need to find a picture of a theremin, because otherwise you will not know what I'm talking about. A theremin is an instrument that you play on invisible sound waves. I know that that doesn't make sense. And yeah. this is going to be so amazing for the podcast, <laughs> because... If you don't know what a theremin is, you really need to have a visual cue of what the theremin does. So I'm going to drop it in the general chat here, just this image. So so if you want to see uh, what Jeff uh, is talking about, join the Discord. Yeah, join the Discord. <laughs> join, join the hero community and you can catch... Uh... Gosh, what he's what he's saying. A theremin. So, Let me Google it, and I'll I can put it on the no, screen. I, I, or is it in the chat? Oh, okay, yeah, uh, it should be uh, under general chat. But basically, so actually, uh, I can describe this for our podcast audience. I've seen one uh, of those, and I've never so understood I, them. Imagine a graph yeah. where basically you have a vertical line and a horizontal line. And that is essentially what a theremin is. There's this base that's like this little rectangle, this rectangular prism that goes from left to right. And it has a metal bar that sticks out from the end of it. And it also has a metal bar that sticks on top of it. So you have this metal bar on the, imagine if it's right in front of you, you have this plank of wood and you have a metal bar sticking out the end of the wood on the right, and you have a metal bar sticking on the left side that's going up and down. Mm-hmm. And I have it up on the screen I mean, for those of you still looking. Yeah. It's way more complicated than that, but just for 
the basics. Yeah. And the uh, I don't even know how to explain it actually. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I know how to like like if you said like if I were playing charades and my prompt was theremin, I could imitate playing a theremin. Okay. Um, so imagine uh, what but I just like, described to how you. How does it work? So the left, so imagine again, you have this bar going up and down on your left side. Yeah. And you have this bar going left to right on your right side. Your left hand is played on the up and down bar. Your right hand is played on the left and right bar. So imagine, okay, so that's what you're looking at. That's the instrument. Now imagine in your head a guitar. Okay. The same way you would play guitar, where your left hand forms a chord on the strings, right? Yeah. You use your left hand, and assuming you're right-handed, but you use your <laughs> left hand to press down on the strings to make a chord, and you use your right hand to strum the strings. Okay. Right? Yeah. And then you use your left hand to change the chord, and then you use your right hand to play that chord. Okay. A theremin you basically control the key or the chord that you're playing by ra by lifting your hand up and down. And the, the instrument, the theremin, has these electronic waves. Like, it's literally like oh, the Matrix, the fucking EVP, yeah, yeah, that are yeah. moving within the space in that graph. So you move your left hand up and down. So now you're, like, if you lift your left hand up a little bit, now you're in the key of C. And, and this is all just for That's example, crazy. none of this is scientifically accurate. And then you yeah. lift your left hand a little higher up on the bar, now you're in the key of G. And then you lift your left hand a little bit higher, now you're forming a D chord, right, right. for example. And then you move your right hand anywhere in between those two bars and it makes sounds. Again, None of what I'm saying is fact. It's just, for example, the best way to understand how a theremin works is just look up a YouTube video, just theremin. And you will see, like, you just kind of raise your right hand up and down vertically, and then you wiggle <laughs> your right hand in between these two bars. I wish you could see me right now, because I'm doing it <laughs> as I describe it, but you can't see it. So why uh, am I doing that? That's how I, podcasts are fun. It, it's yeah I, I i've seen those before i didn't know what they were called so that's cool that's cool i'm gonna ask my yeah, boss that, that's how you get that weird sort of like wow, like those weird kind of sounds is oh. is very theremin based what a trip what a trip it's okay. a trippy instrument that sounds so cool if someone said you're only allowed to learn one instrument I would probably just say theremin now. If they were like, you had to learn one instrument, mm -hmm. I'd be like, all right, I'll learn the theremin. Um, <laughs> that, that would be the just ostensibly, choice. you're playing sound waves in the air. It's, yeah. it's an instrument that is physically in front of you, but it's also invisible at the same time. That's so cool. Because so you cool. don't actually physically touch anything. I'm so glad they put that in there. Uh, but I am happy. I, I did like the sound design. I think... The, I don't know. I, it's hard for me. I'm I'm a stickler when it comes to choreographed uh, fight scenes in show. Like if you're gonna put action in your scenes, I want it to be good. Uh, you know, I, I think I think we're we're at a point now where I don't I don't want to see you know eleven cuts for one move to be yeah. done i want to i want everything to be centered i want it to be focused especially if you're spending this much money make it make it look good and you you know marvel films are you go into a marvel film knowing or thinking oh this is going to be an action film so start 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 making your action look better marvel i'm calling you out on that i think anytime i go into a marvel film now i'm excited and then i see it and i'm like meh <laughs> yeah yeah uh, the, the best thing about yeah. them though is that they contribute to the story a lot of the times and that i can appreciate um i can appreciate it when it contributes to the story but i can't i can't appreciate the action itself it's not <clears throat> if yeah if you're gonna dedicate this much time to it start 
Start uh, start uh, putting your money where your mouth is. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, I I I just want to feel danger for people. I want to feel tense and and, just, and and again, like when I say I want to feel tense, I don't mean I want to be jump scared. Um, uh, again, I'm kind of segueing back to Black Widow, where Nat. Nat is, is is driving down a road and oh my god a missile comes and blows up her car like no don't jump scare me that's not what I'm talking about uh stop doing the Aquaman thing where people are having a conversation <laughs> and then mid sentence something blows up but <laughs> make me feel like th- there are stakes um yeah and I, I yeah like and yeah. again like that's something moving forward that again I I, I want to. I, I hopefully I, I will feel some kind of tension but like again the what we were talking about with Kang is if they do go the route where holy shit like this like uh, uh, Jonathan Majors could potentially play like 20 different versions of this character and that's so great it's like okay like he shows up an Ant-Man they kill him but he comes back in the next movie and then they kill him again. But then he comes back in this other TV show and then they kill him. Like, I don't want it to be that because then I'm just like, okay, he's the villain that'll never die <laughs> because it's <laughs> they're just killing different variants of him. You know what I mean? Yes. Yes. That That's what I'm worried about with it being oversaturated with that kind of stuff as well. I don't yeah. want, I don't want to get too much of him. I, I, I like that we got him right here. We got a lot of him right here, but I hope he just disappears. I want, I want there to be like nothing of him for the next two years, and then we get like another snippet or another taste of him, and then boom, disappears yeah. again. Because uh, if they give us too much of him, and they show, because they didn't even beat him this time, Loki did not beat him. Loki, he let them win. Yeah, and it, it's, it didn't even feel like a win. They felt like they lost too. Well, I mean, I mean, Sylvie won in the sense that she achieved what she had set out to achieve since she was a little girl. Sylvie accomplished her goal. She also goal. lost because, yes, like but she also she lost because she didn't wrap her head around what the consequences of achieving her goal were. You know, were. It, what's up with that, right? Because... She's over here saying this is bigger than the two of us. So whenever they first meet, Sylvie seems like she's past the whole pettiness of being a Loki. And and Loki's still trying to grow from it. But then in the end, he's the grown-up and she's still petty. I mean... What? Like, why did... Where did the... And then the fact that she went so far to get to him. Because she does care for him. She does care for him. She does. It's not. Here's the thing about Loki. He's so brilliant in the (laughs) fact that he uses his own emotions as like a projection to manipulate people. Right. He understands how he feels. And because he knows how he feels, he relates that to how other people feels. And then he uses that against them. And he calls them weak for allowing their emotions to control him. So like. We know Sylvie cares for Loki, and we know Sylvie manipulates Loki, but I, like, her obsession with the Time Lord, I just, whenever she said this is bigger than all of us, because that's one of the first things she says to him, and it's that same decision of, you know, do you want to sit here and be the timekeepers and allow everyone to live in their loop, or do you want to give everyone the free will you've been talking about and loki and i love this too because this is just hitting me loki (laughs) has grown but hasn't grown he's just found it's like it's like whenever you you're rebounding in a relationship and you you break up with someone and then you go on to the next person to move on but you haven't really moved on you're just using that next person as a distraction from your pain when in reality you should probably spend some alone time with yourself and 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 get some self development done i think that's what happened to loki like he went from oh i want to rule the universe and the nine realms of of asgard but instead, 
And he went from that to giving up that, accepting that he's given up that, but he didn't let that marinate long enough. And he jumped, he rebound off of Sylvie and was like, oh, I want to rule, I, not rule you. I want to service you. I want you, I want to be there for you. And he let his love blind him from what could actually like be done. Right. And I, and I think that's good that he didn't fully develop so that we can get more of him and he can still grow. Cause once a character is fully developed, I mean, the show's over. No one, no one takes interest in the show anymore. They have to be. That's, you know, you, the, the, would, if they, will they, you know, Ross and Rachel kind of thing that has to mm -hmm. go on for nine seasons or else. Oh yeah. It, well, yeah, I mean, well, that, that's the, the easiest way to create conflict. Oh, the characters got everything that they wanted. Take it away from them. Yeah. The second, you know, everything's good. The second everything's good. You just have to know something wrong is going to happen. So, yeah. I mean, I'm, I still, Can I. Yes, please, because I kind of no, got I, myself I in a say, rut here. So I, I fully, I understand exactly why Sylvie does what she does, and she goes forth and kills Kang. Yeah. And I'm going to say something super controversial in the way that you always say that you're saying controversial things, but I'm going to invoke... The final season of Game of Thrones. Okay. And okay. say that, and, and you've seen Game of Thrones, right? We've talked about this? Yeah. Okay. So. Also, I also, in... uh, we have about uh, 54 minutes left. So I'm not okay. like, I'm not, I'm just making sure that you're aware, but like, yes, keep going. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping an eye on the time. Um, I am in the minority where when. Oh my God, don't you say it. Yep. When Don't you Daenerys... fucking say this, dude. All right, there goes our fifty minutes. We're about to talk. <laughs> no, 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 no. But just follow me here. Just okay, follow me here. Okay. And I'm only. I'm. I'm not doing this to be like Game of Thrones season eight was actually great, and you're all just stupid. No, I'm not doing that. I'm just saying I'm using it to relate to Sylvie in the final episode of Loki. I am in the minority where. Uh, again, I don't agree with it at all. I am not at all a supporter of mass genocide. But put yourself... <laughs> this is so stupid because we're talking about mass genocide. But put yourself in Daenerys' shoes where here she is. She is about to... She, she is on the precipice of finally becoming the ruler of the Seven Kingdoms. But in her mind... What she has always imagined, or, or or at least what she has imagined for the last, you know, however many years, is on one side, she would have Missandei, and on the other side, she would have Jorah, the two, her two biggest supporters, her best friends, her confidants. Yet, Jorah just fucking died in the Long Night Battle, and Missandei was just fucking decapitated by Cersei and she's looking at it and she's like I am about to cross the precipice and achieve everything I've ever wanted and yet I am alone I am not here with the people who have meant the most to me and therefore fuck it I have nothing left so burn it to the ground fuck it this this is this is all I have ever wanted and it is not how I wanted it to be. And I think that that's what Sylvie is feeling as well, is that all she has ever wanted for her entire mm. life, like, like all she has ever known her entire life is death and destruction. Because like she even said, and, and it's fucking heartbreaking. Like she even says in uh, like the beginning of episode four, I think it is like before, right before they go back to the TVA, when she talks about, you know, she figured out the loophole that all she had to do was keep time traveling to different apocalypses. And that's how she would be untraceable. And so all she has experienced, like from the time she was like, let's say conservatively 10 to 30. So let's say for the last 20 years, her entire life has just been watching hundreds, thousands, millions of people die as she's just like jumping from time period to time period. And throughout that whole time, all she has ever wanted is to destroy the TVA. 
And she finally gets to that moment where she is talking, she is face to face with the man who runs the TVA. And he says, actually, don't kill me. I want to give you a job opportunity instead. If I'm Sylvie, fuck that guy. I'm stabbing you in the heart. Like, I, I think th th there's two things that work here. One, I think that that's just her care. Like, this is all she has thought about is, is vengeance against the individual who is at the top of the food chain. And I don't think that she, for a moment, considers another door, another option. For her, it's always been, I'm going to find the guy who is at the top and I'm going to fucking kill him. And I think, too, what we're seeing here, because a lot of people have, like, theorized about this, is the whole, like, fracturing of the timeline, which is when Kang says, you know, actually, I fibbed earlier. I don't know everything that's going to happen. I only knew what was going to happen up to a point. And people are like, well, that's weird that because if you look behind him, when he starts to say, you know, I only knew what was going to happen up to a certain point, and that was 10 seconds ago, da 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 if you look behind him, if you, like all the shots that they have outside, the true timeline has already started to split. Yeah. Because I, I've seen a lot of people say that, oh yeah, when she kills him, when she stabs him, that's when the multiverse is created. No, 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 no. no, no. It's created a couple mm -hmm. moments before that. Yeah, it's already starting to split. The multiverse, and, and here's why, why I think Sylvie is going to play a, a very important role moving forward. The multiverse is not created because Kang dies. The multiverse is created because Sylvie has already made the decision to kill him. Yeah. The moment the timeline starts to split off into all of the, the branches is because she's already decided, I don't give a fuck what this guy has to say anymore. I'm going to kill him because yeah. that's all I've ever wanted. And I, okay, first off, I want to commend you. Oh, I wish they had you in the behind the scenes Game of Thrones <laughs> instead of D&D &D, explaining why Daenerys did what she did because they did a horrible job explaining it. And yeah, two... Yeah. <laughs> I didn't write that. I just interpreted it in a way that made me feel comfortable with the decisions, with the poor decisions that they made her make. Right. <laughs> <laughs> then, I was like, no, I disagree with this. I'm just going to think about it in a different way that makes me okay with it. <laughs> Secondly, yeah, I agree with you. And I, I think I felt that too. I didn't I didn't observe that though. Like the, the thing splits because of um her decision making. And now that you say that, it, it it drives that scene so much harder and it drives it so much more passionately. I do see where Sylvie's coming from. And and I think I have like whenever she chooses to kill him, I was not thinking, oh, like, why Sylvie? You've been so steadfast. I I think when I was confused earlier, a big part of me was questioning, okay, where do we see that transition? I think we really do see that transition the closer and closer they get to it. Because it is, like you said, and it is heartbreaking because she's only ever lived with seeing death. And because and, and it's almost like she goes into berserker mode. Like, all she sees is red. You know? All yeah. she sees is, I'm going to kill him. Like, yeah. I'm here and my emotions have taken over. And I think Loki knows that. And that's why he's being so patient with her. And he and he doesn't say, I don't care what happens out there. He says, I just care what happens to you. Because I think he knows. No, that, I, that moment is so heartbreaking. Yeah. He knows if she kills him, she's not going to get fulfillment out of it. She will accomplish her goal. She will accomplish her life goal. But I think he understands that he she will not get fulfillment. And he's worried for her because... At the end of the day, Loki really, yeah, he's grown into this person that is probably a little more selfless and probably a little more, um, um, I'm sorry, probably a little less maniacal, but he's still self-serving in a way. And, and like, you would do this for anyone that you love, right? To damn mm -hmm. with the, with the rest of the world. This is my love and I will, you know, I'll fight for it. So I think that's a beautiful moment. I love that moment where he says, I don't care what, what happens. I just, I want you to be okay. I want you to be okay. God. Yeah. It's, it's so, so good. It's so good. And it's such a good last episode. 
<laughs> it's such a good last episode. That's what I can really say for that. Is, it's man. such a good last episode. Yeah, no, you put it you put it in perfectly. I can't say it better than that. They did really good with Sylvie. They did good with Loki. They did great with Mobius. They I didn't care for Oh. Uh real quick. Unami Mosaka's character. Hunter I... B fifteen. Real quick, what what was that? Wait, what? <laughs> oh no, no uh, I was just gonna say I I don't believe this theory at all. It's just a wild fucking theory. It's just people trolling the internet, whatever. Okay. But I, I, I like that someone was able to connect A to B and make a joke of this. Okay. So all of the members of the TVA are variants. Mobius is a variant, right? Which yeah. means that there is at least two Mobiuses in the universe. Maybe there's two million. Who knows? But somebody, uh, uh, I forget where, where I saw this the first time, but they made the connection of like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so Mobius keeps talking about jet skis, right? Which, first of all, really disappointed we never saw him on a jet ski because uh, yeah. that's all I want for Mobius. I'm, I'm and glad that, he, that he never got on a jet ski. <laughs> I'm glad that he connected the dots, though. Yes. I'm glad that he was like, I was probably someone who loved jet skis. And then, um, But somebody made the connection of like, okay, so if this variant of Mobius likes jet skis, perhaps there is another variant of Mobius that prefers a different kind of aquatic vehicle, that being a surfboard. Owen Wilson is Silver Surfer, confirmed. Oh, I've heard a different one. I was like, I don't. That's a huge fucking stretch, but I appreciate you for for making the meme. That that's is fun. a that is a mighty stretch. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I don't bit... think I, I really do not think this is foreshadowing or setup in any way for Owen oh. Wilson to be the fucking Silver Surfer. But that's, that's cute. That's too. That's a, that's too much for me. <laughs> that's a, a bit of a stretch. That's a bit, a bit of, a of a stretch. Um. I heard this other one that Owen Wilson, that the original Owen Wilson was in, uh, let's see, how do I, let me, let me, let me, let me see if I can pull it up. Oh, I'm not going to be able to find it, but there is, there is a movie <laughs> that Owen Wilson was in, shocker, that, uh, it would take, that was in the nineties. And he rides a jet, jet ski, and people are saying that that movie they uh, dumped him, nah, in, no. er, erased his memories, and then he became Mobius. <laughs> that that's a fan theory that I've heard that was pretty fun. Maybe it was the big bounce. I don't know. Maybe that that was but, a big beachy kind of movie. Either way. Uh, Owen Wilson was fantastic. <laughs> Nonetheless, I'm just, I'm just hoping, and and I know it's not going to happen, but I'm going to keep picturing it and hope that they actually do something with it. I'm just hoping that with the whole multiverse thing that they're setting up, that at some point, I don't know if it's going to be one of the shows, one of the movies, which which characters show is going to do this or whatever. But we visit a universe that is our actual universe. And we have, <laughs> like, you know, Thor runs into Chris Hemsworth. That'd be or hilarious. That'd be freaking fucking hilarious. Loki runs into Tom Hiddleston, you know? And, and there's just, you know, fun They're just jokes actors to, to be had. They, they say, what are you guys doing? Why are you guys making movies of our life? And it's like, your, your life isn't real. You're, it's like that episode in Supernatural where they meet the writer. <laughs> yeah, like, like, I, I legit <laughs> hope that there's like a last action hero kind of riff yes. going on. Where it's like, Evans, what are you doing? Like, Evans, my name is Steve Rogers. <laughs> you know? Right, right. That would be, I would love that. I would even even if it's just for a beat, that. if if it's like a you know kind of like the the scene in Doctor Strange where the Ancient One is flashing and zipping him through all the different universes, if it's just like we land there for like ten seconds and then boom, we're out and we're on yeah. to like the next multiverse thing, like, like a like, yeah, just that would, some that would be great, especially it would be like a scene from Deadpool. 
Deadpool 2. Just just a quick little Oh. Exactly. Oh, oh that's neat. That's fun. That's cute. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. That's in my mind now, and now I have expectations, and if they aren't met, I'm gonna be really mad. It's it's not. There there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no way. I you know, the whole time I was watching it, I like to do I like to I, I've always wanted to make this show where I talk about sci-fi logic and I explain things that don't quite make sense in, in the universe, but they make sense in that universe. The problem with the show is that I actually have to figure it out. And I was wrapping my head around mm. how the time travel works in that world. And it just like, it just didn't ever make sense to me. Cause every time I thought I figured it out, it, it, it didn't make sense. Because something something else broke it, uh, and I'll tell you original. So this is going to be kind of a long story, but I'll tell you originally. I was like, okay, so what they do is they nuke the area, and then it resets it. And every time that Loki makes a decision, or every time there's a variant, they just they snip the branches and they continue it on the same path. But that would mean they constantly would go back to New York. And constantly nuke New York every time Loki grabbed the Tesseract, which would mean Owen Wilson would have had this interaction with Loki a million times, but he hadn't. This was his first time with this Loki. So they don't continuously go back and do that same thing, even though they should be. So, like, what? Because if the Avengers are supposed to go back in time, and if Hulk I'm is so supposed glad brought to this up. go downstairs... I don't know. I, I'm so glad that you brought this up because they say specifically the Avengers fucking around with time travel was supposed to happen. Right. You fucking around with time travel was not supposed to happen. But wait a minute. Let's talk about just what the Avengers did because <laughs> what the Avengers did was they went even further back into the 70s to get more pin particles but they only did that because Loki fucked up. Right. But so <laughs> are we to believe? So, so what she, what, what Ravona Renslayer presents is there is another timeline wherein they didn't fuck up and accidentally like knock over the Tesseract and Loki escaped. And then everything went off without a hitch and it still resulted in Thanos getting the upper hand and showing up and Tony Stark sacrificing himself. Yes, and like, like, I'm glad you brought that up. There's an alternate where everything happens according to plan except for... No, it's good for that you're bringing this up. It's good. That. It's good that you're and bringing like, this up. Because... Well, let's explore that some more. <laughs> it got answered. So one of the writers um, mm. answered this and they finish, said... Finish what you're saying, but I just thought of a tremendous plot hole in the entire MCU. Go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So one of the writers says, so in the beginning of Loki, there's a quote from a, I don't know if he's a philosopher or what, but it, there's a quote from him where he talks about how we perceive time. And he goes, most people perceive time in a linear fashion. However, time is not supposed to be perceived like that. Time is perceived um, in the present. And it is so beautiful that they put that there because they knew what they were doing. And they said, from the very get go, the way that they perceive time is that time is happening all at once. Everything is happening in the present. We perceive time so that we can have a grasp on it. But time is essentially made up by us, if you think about it. Because if you take two stopwatches and you start them at the same instance and then you separate them, their time will dilation will change and mess up. If you, or if you take two watches and you synchronize them and you you move them apart from each other, their time dilation will mess up. This is the same reason why we do not know the speed of light. We know how fast mm -hmm. light will travel to, an, to point A back to – or we know how fast light will travel from point A to point B and back to point A. But we don't know how fast it travels from point A to B. We know A, B, A, but not A to B. Right. Because of this issue, this dilemma that we have w with the facing time. So because time is always present and everything's happening, because we perceive that 
World War One started in 1941 or whatever, and it ended in 19 yada yada. Or World War Two started in 1942 and ended in 19 yada yada. However, the events that the the dominoes that actually started World War One could have were put in place hundreds of years ago. So who's to say when World War One actually started or World War Two actually started, <laughs> right? And who's to, and we're still feeling the, the effects. Brain. We're still feeling the effects of World War Two today. So who's to say when World War Two actually ended? Time is just as we perceive oh, it. Oh, that's weird. Yeah. yeah. So we are always in the present, and because of this, the 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 main timeline is not one timeline it's not one line it's actually like like and i think screen rants puts this best it's like a it's like whenever they're making rope and you have a spool of rope and you have all this other different parts of string being spooled into one rope to create this tight knitting right that's what the main timeline is and even whenever they like the camera zooms in and goes into the 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 main and quotation marks proper timeline you see uh-huh. all these mini timelines in it so really what kang is doing is he's making anything that branches from him being the only king to survive he's snipping and getting rid of and he's allowing all these other timelines yeah. to happen as long as they make him in existence and yeah. he's staying outside of it and he's constantly living in the present so he's seeing so for him, it's like that scene in the Matrix in Matrix 2 where that guy's sitting and he's surrounded by all these TVs and all the Neos are doing things at different periods, but for him they're all happening right. at once. That's how time is perceived. Yeah. It's like you're sitting <laughs> and you're watching a bunch of TVs and you're watching the dinosaurs and you're also watching Avengers on the same screen because time is just constantly in the present. So this is why I want time travel to just stop. (laughs) So, so whenever you say that the Avengers, like there's, there's any time they make just a slight alteration. So basically if I woke up in the morning and I chose not to brush my teeth, that creates a different timeline. But there's a timeline where I did choose to brush my teeth. Or there's a timeline where I brushed my teeth halfway. Oh, yeah. I, I love this shit. And yeah. then decided not to like, and then was like, ah, eh, I don't feel like it. There's a timeline where I use mouthwash, right? Or there's a timeline where we had this conversation 10 seconds ago or 10 seconds in the yeah. future. And like. There's a timeline where one of us was like texted the other one like, hey, dude, I don't really feel like meeting up tonight. So let's reschedule for next week. Or exactly. And it's like, okay, like we both did something completely different tonight that may have altered the course of our entire future. Right. And so the writer of Loki said that, that Kang allows for those, those, those little instances are constantly happening. So let's say you decide to pick up the phone eight out of 10 times, but so those two times you didn't pick up the phone created a branching, branching thing. So that's what's happening is so maybe, maybe, Eight out of ten times, Loki picks up the Tesseract. Or, or I'm sorry, the tesser- Hulk comes in, knocks the Tesseract off, but Loki doesn't pick it up. It's that ninth time that Loki picks up the Tesseract. And mm-hmm. then and then they go and they do the whole thing. And Kang sees this, but he's sitting outside the loop. And what his job is, is he just resets everything. So he's like, oh, yeah, I saw you and Sylvie sitting out there. I saw, yeah, I've seen you guys get erased a million and one times. So the TVA doesn't realize that they've gone back and reset Loki probably a billion times because Mm -hmm. every time they get to Kang, he resets everything. So that way he stays in existence. (laughs) That's so crazy. It's wild. (laughs) So, So here's the thing. So something just popped into my head yeah. that unravels the entirety of Endgame. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. But here's the thing. It either there, there's two options. One, it unravels the entirety of Endgame, or it just means that that one thing that Renslayer said in the first episode is bullshit. So <laughs> here we go. So Loki goes into the courtroom and Renslayer says the Avengers going back in time was supposed to happen. You escaping was not supposed to happen. Okay. 
However, so, so that means that, but, but here's the way that the timeline happened is they go back in time. Loki escapes. The Avengers then have to go further back in time. And then the remainder of Endgame happens. So that conflicts with what Doctor Strange said in Infinity War when he said, I saw 14 million blah, blah, blah futures. There is only one outcome in which we win. Oh, snap. Well, well. No, no, no. Think about it. And again, I'm, it's not going to unravel. And again, they're fucking movies. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, I got you. I got but you. Here's the thing. The one time, the one outcome in which they win is what happened because they go back in time, Loki escapes, they go further back in time, they get all the fucking stones, Tony sacrifices himself. And we know that that's the one because fucking Doctor Strange holds up the one finger and he's like, hey, Tony, th- this is it. Remember, I told you there's only but, the one outcome. But out of out of 14 billion, what happens when he looks 15 billion times? No, 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 but, but, but <laughs> if we are to believe that lo- them going to time travel was supposed to happen, but Loki escaping was not supposed to happen then that presumes there is an alternate timeline wherein they do time travel. Loki does not escape, but they succeed in tr- in defeating Thanos anyway. Yeah, so that means... Which puts forth the idea that there are, in actuality, two outcomes <laughs> in which they win. So Doctor Strange was wrong. Well, Doctor Strange... Could have been correct out of the 14 billion, like one out of 14 billion. But like I said, like, what is it? Two out of 15 billion? Is it two out of 28 but, but billion? But it's not odds. Statistically. He's not playing odds. He is saying, I saw 14 million plus futures. Right. And out of all of those, there's only one where we win. But that's out of an infinite number of futures. Right, so he only got to fourteen million. Okay, well that's true. (laughs) So if he had gotten to fifteen million, he He might have seen like, well, yeah. Well, he just didn't have the time, ironically enough, to. And again, I'm I'm just trolling because uh, I did see a lot of people. This is kind of backtracking, but I did see a lot of people when Endgame came out, like, really a fucking rat walks across a van and accidentally pushes yeah, a button that. and shoots us. And I was like, hey, that's out of 14 million possibilities. <laughs> there were 13 million possibilities where the where rat that- wasn't even there, you guys. So <laughs> they kind of they kind of answered their own probability hex. And so, you know, if, yeah. if I'm going to say that, then I'm okay with <laughs> I'm okay. The, the Loki wasn't supposed to do it shit. Right. Right. But again, uh, all, all of this to say, this is why I will never fucking do time travel in anything that I write. <laughs> it's a trip, because, dude. It's a Because trip. again, and, and, and this is this is one of the things that like I hate time travel because it does shit like this where we're just like, well, but if this, then that. But it's also the thing that I love about time travel is because stop thinking about it. There are currently, <laughs> I shit you not, dude, there are currently at least nine working scientific theories on time travel which to me is like yeah that's why i don't fucking think about time travel when i watch movies because it's not fucking real it doesn't exist you can do whatever you want with time because even scientists can't agree on it yeah they can't even agree on it it's one of the one of those theories exist one of those right right it's like it's like getting mad at iron man Time travel gets so convoluted. Yes, it does. That's what chat says. Time travel is always convoluted, and it's always yeah. it's always a trip. The <laughs> coming from a guy where the main character in that video game does nothing but time travel. <laughs> uh, the one of those theories is shown in Iron Man. So you know how like. I, I'm not in Iron Man in Endgame. 
you know, Iron Man's like sitting there and he's all like, all right, bring up the, the Mobius circle. And mm-hmm. I'm just now realizing his name's Mobius and he's part of that. that Oh, oh, that was very intentional. That is fantastic. That was very intentional. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. M- Mobius's name is a time theory. I can't believe I just put those two together right now. Anyways, the so like, it's not that it's not like Tony Stark invented the Mobius Circle. It's actually a theory that's been worked on. It's just that he was apparently the first person to be like, uh, just invert it for me real quick. I just want to see something. He was the first person to like invert it, and then that worked. And he has the technology to make it work. Mm. <laughs> so they took. I thought that was neat that they took an actual like time. I love science. Yeah, I, I literally. <laughs> if you if you didn't notice, I love just like watching YouTube science videos, and I love uh, that kind of geeky stuff. So. Uh, mm-hmm. I love whenever they put that kind of stuff in there, just like how some people probably love whenever they put uh, orange keyboard typewriters in the show. <laughs> Definitely. It's, yeah, that's how they explain time travel. And now that it's explained to me, it answers a lot of questions and it helps. I like how they per- how they perceive time. And I also like how they took it from a scientist slash philosopher. I can't remember the guy's name, but it's literally like one of the first quotes that gets said as the credits are rolling in and showing off like Loki in the, mm. in the thing. Uh, yeah, man, crazy, 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 crazy. I, I, I'm yeah. glad we got to talk about that. I'm glad I got to, I almost forgot to talk about it, but I was, we kept on dinging each other with like ideas. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, uh, but I, that's kind of probably my final thoughts. Uh, we got to talk about characters. We got to talk about the set. We got to talk about the plot. And I got to learn what a... What was that instrument called again? Theremin. 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 Oh, man. It's, oh. A, it's a trip, dude. It, it looks like a trip. It's it, it. I feel like that's one of the perfect instruments you got to use for a show like this. Yeah. Like, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely going to go down the rabbit hole of watching Theremin YouTube videos <laughs> before I go to sleep, because it's on my brain now, and because it's a fantastic instrument. The, But do you have any last last thoughts, last uh, final things you got to say with our, we got 15 minutes, 14 minutes. Let's see, final, I mean, I, I feel like I, I've said everything. It, it didn't... I, I, would I recommend watching Loki? Absolutely. Um, I think that it's a fantastic show. It is wonderfully designed. Um, it it hit me in ways that um, I don't know how to describe it. Like WandaVision really affected me because I can super duper relate to those characters in those situations loki i i i didn't have quite the emotional response that i had with wandavision but i think that other people will if that makes sense right um it 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 didn't quite hit me in the feels as much but then again i'm very emo and i like my shows and my movies very emo and wandavision was very emo and loki was not even though his hair is aesthetically very emo um but yeah i i dug the show i think it's great the the one thing we didn't talk about that i want to uh bring up very quickly is in the first two episodes they introduced my favorite character in the entire goddamn mcu and then he's never seen ever again and that's Casey. I think Casey is 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 the the best character in the MCU, and that's the the guy who is like where uh, he's like, uh, "Tell me what this is, or I'll gut you like a fish." And oh, he's like, "What's a fish?" Casey. And he's like, what, "Hey, what's Eugene, this thing?" And he's like, it's, "Eugene Cordero." It, it's an infinity. It, it's a tesseract. Don't break it. And he's like, "It looks dumb." Like. I mean, you know me. Like it, it like that character is Broxer. Yeah. Like yeah. it's the character who's just he's... so innocent and adorable, 
but oh my god, you're so dim-witted. Get out of here, but at the same time, be in every episode. <laughs> He's been showing up in a lot of things. So he was in The Good Place, which I definitely recommend. Yes. Anyone who hasn't seen The Good Place, go watch The Good Place. Absolutely. Uh, and he was in The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. But in like one episode, in a really small part. And then I was happy and surprised to see him in this. And he... He's I wanted of, so much more from that character, and uh, I mean, I, I'm exaggerating by saying he's the best character in the entire MCU. But just just the idea that there's like, I just love that aesthetic. I think it's because <laughs> I've been playing Broxer recently. Like, just the idea of like, oh yeah, that's an Infinity Stone. Sometimes some of the other people use them as paperweights, <laughs> you know. And he's just so proud but unaware, you know. And like in Episode Two when. Loki is doing the whole thing with Mobius' salad, and he like looks over in Casey's there, and he's like, ah, it's you! <laughs> you know, it's just funny. <laughs> right. Uh, nope, that's but yeah, good. Fi- final thoughts. It's it's a good show. I'm 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 curious to see what it. It's the first Marvel show that ends on a legit cliffhanger. Um, like I think with WandaVision and with Falcon Winter Soldier, like we have questions about things, but they given the, the way that the show ends. But but yeah, there there is a conclusion there. Um, and this is just straight up. Yeah, there's not a conclusion. This is open ended as fuck. Um, which uh, it, it's it's interesting as well because this is the first Marvel show to be confirmed for an actual second season. It's not just a standalone, hey, this would have been a movie, but we wanted more time, so therefore we made it a TV show. Right. This one is like, no, this is a show. Right. Um, so that's interesting. Um, yeah, go watch it. I Yeah, I have to agree with a lot of your, your points. Um, it, it's a good show. Fantastically done, characters well done. I mean, you heard us talk about it. I recommend it. If you haven't seen it, you listen to the spoilers. It's not, even knowing everything that's going to happen in the show, you're still gonna have a fun ride so i mean it's so good that me and jeff were able to sit here and talk about it for about two hours or two hours and 30 minutes because we did talk about the whole disney fiasco thing for a little bit and it's a good time it's a good time it brings Mm -hmm. up a lot of conversations and it gets you excited it gets you genuinely excited for the next phase in the marvel films so uh go check it out any of uh, my recommendations if you're uh looking for what to watch next i this is just sprung in the moment i'm just pulling this out because i'm excited to go watch uh the green knight <clears throat> if, mm. i'm i'm pr- uh, you know if you're a fan of um epic poems go check <laughs> it out and if you are into superhero stuff and you want to know what the next big next nerdy thing is going to be uh well next week we're going to also have uh the suicide squad and marvel what if there's also only two more episodes left of star wars the bad batch so you're definitely going to hear me talk about that when that's over i don't know i don't know when or where or on what platform i'm going to talk about it but somehow i'm going to find a way to talk about it <laughs> so uh we'll, we'll see that those, those are what to come for me that's what i'm going to be up to so if you want to if you tell me your thoughts join the community uh the here join be a, become a hero join the discord down Be a below hero, you guys and uh let's uh, it, you know let's talk about this kind of stuff i'd love to have it but you can always catch me and jeff live at twitch.tv slash digital hero 101 at 8 8 30 p.m central time zone for us at the very least and I, I do think I'm going to start putting these on YouTube. I think I'm, I think I'm going to start doing that. But yeah, uh, you can also keep up to date on the date by uh, listening to us on your podcast service of choice. It took me a while to find us on Spotify because I kept on separating roundtable. I kept on making that two words, but it's one word. Um. <laughs> so it's digital, and then roundtable, one word. Uh, but yeah, we're on there. Uh, the, the, the Caitlin's been putting on the episodes. I got onto her the other day. Because she was just labeling them episode one, two, three, four, and I was like, "Hey, we need titles for these things." So I'm gonna start giving her titles. S E O, bro. S E O. Search engine optimization. 
I wonder if they're... I need to look on the website that I put these up on because Caitlin uploads them. I wonder if it's like the tags. What if she? What if the tags are just not that great? Or maybe Spotify just has a weird, very specific search engine. But... I mean, if you search digital space roundtable one word, it, it pops up. It pops up. It's the first thing that pops up. But I want, I want but yeah, people to it, find it, it is... even with spacing it out. Yeah, you you also need titles in there because it's yeah. like episode one, episode okay, fuck that. Yeah, but if it's yeah. like, oh, Loki, oh, I like Loki, I click on that. Or exactly. Fast and Furious, I click on that. I want people, I want people to be like, oh snap, they they talking about the things that I like. That's that's how <laughs> I imagine generically what people sound like in my head. <laughs> <laughs> that's a podcast I would like to listen that's to. That- <laughs> it's just such a good voice dude it's it really such a is good voice. Such a good it's so now, fun to say that i'm literally gonna go and like watch his review over loki because i haven't seen it let's see what yeah. he says he, but- he had a he, he had a point that you brought up at the very beginning which is he was like week to week fuck that and he literally watched it and then immediately made his video because he he just watched them all no. at the same time and he was like i fucking loved it i think i prefer really week to week i'm not gonna lie yeah. I, I think I prefer it just because I I really enjoy the camaraderie of it all of a week to week because I feel like whenever something comes out we talk about it for a week mm. nailed it the general populace totally sounds like that right yeah we're really good at mimicking the general <laughs> populace uh, I feel like whenever we talk about or whenever something comes out on Netflix we'll talk about it for like a week maybe two weeks and then it's like okay that was cool and that's it. But when something's coming out week to week, I love because it's like, oh, I'm still on this. You know, I'm still I'm still feeling this. I still want to talk about this. I still want yeah. to run into other people that have the same things. But that's the only reason why I like it. It's just for the com- camaraderie. Um, I do also love binging something. I love just being like not having to wait a week for it. So mm-hmm. that's also fun. But yeah, I don't know. Topic for another time. Maybe it, it's 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 personal opinion. I, I get that, too personal opinion different reasons to like it i like variety that's how i'm gonna answer it i want both and i'm glad i have the option <laughs> i'm glad yeah. i have some things that i can bench we gotta wrap up you're about to run out of time i'm gonna i'm gonna milk every second of it just like how disney's milking every no okay uh <laughs> every dollar <laughs> until next time play nice What's that Ezio says? Sometimes it's a killer wait for a week or for a new episode. Yeah, sometimes it is.